Assalamu alaikum friends welcome to lecture 10 of SBR today we are going to discuss IS 19 employee benefits you need to be very careful with this standard because this standard has not been tested in financial reporting so this is this standard is most likely to come for your SBR exam and this is little lengthy compared to other standards and it has lots of questions and it's going to be a little tricky so make sure that you do each and every question in employee benefits because the types of question that can come in this there are varieties of questions that can come in employee benefits and most of the time students often lose marks on this standard so let's start we are going to discuss the types of employee benefits post employee benefits accounting for defined contribution plans there are two types of post employment benefit plans one is known as defined contribution plan the other one is known as defined benefit plans then we are going to discuss defined benefit plan amendments curtailments and settlement if you don't know the meaning of amendment curtailment and settlement don't worry you will know it when we reach there asset ceiling and some other issues you have to know both the theory as well as the calculation so starting with types of employee benefit there are four types of employee benefit number one post employee benefit post employment benefit means this benefit comes after you have completed your employment terms that means this benefits are after your retirement the pensions okay this is this is the major issue that we are going to deal in this lecture we are going to work on the post employment benefit only then we have some short term employee benefits short term employee benefit means this benefit you will be receiving it while you are in the job while you are an, while you are an employee it does not come after employment like your wages salary bonuses other benefits in kind right but this lecture is not going to deal with this third termination benefit termination benefit means benefits which you receive after you have terminated your employment this could be in two ways either your employer has terminated you or you have decided to end the employment right whatever the way you are going to receive some benefit for it this benefit only comes when you when you have decided to terminate your employment okay and the fourth type is other long time long term employee benefits like long term disability benefits other long term service for example you have stayed in the company same company let's say for 20 years or 20 plus so to 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 appreciate those kind of employees they give some long service benefits and all all those other benefits which are not there in the above three comes under other long term employee benefits okay but our main focus is on post employment benefit which is pension the two types of pension and how to calculate and all those things so starting with post employment benefit plans okay what is a pension plan first you need to understand what is a pension plan before we go to the types of the pension plan because the accounting for the two types of pension plans are different and you have to know this difference pension plan okay it consists of pool of assets and also liability okay so there are two terms one is known as pension plan assets the other one is known as pension plan liabilities okay pension plan assets have investments cash properties okay and whatever the return you get on those assets are used to pay the pension okay if you're not understanding the theory behind this it's fine because you don't have to write this theory in the exam the main focus is to identify the two types of plan and the accounting how to account for it 
This is the only thing you have to know in SBR. The two types of pension plan are defined contribution plan, defined benefit plan. I repeat, defined contribution plan and defined benefit plan is just a change of one word in between that changes everything. So be very, very, very careful which one are you choosing. Sometimes you meant to say contribution, but you write benefit. It happens, it happens. So you have to be very, very careful which one. One is defined contribution plan, one is defined benefit. Contribution, benefit, contribution, benefit. Okay. Now, the difference. Starting with defined contribution. We are going to work on defined benefit. Actually. Defined contribution, not so much. It's just a small percentage. But the rest, 95% is on defined benefit plan only. Because that's our topic for this lecture. But understand what is defined contribution plan. Because after this, we'll be doing one question where we have to know, we have to identify whether it's a defined contribution plan or a defined benefit plan. Okay. Defined contribution plan is very easy to understand. Why? Because this type of plan are fixed. You take a fixed percentage, okay, from the employee salary and pay it in the pension plan. You pay a fixed contribution. Let's say 5% of your employee salary. You are putting it in the pension plan each month. This is the meaning of contribution plan. So, if the company has an obligation, the company has no obligation to pay outside the fixed contribution. Whatever the contribution that you have planned, it's fixed. You, can, you don't have to change it. Let's say if, if they say we are going to pay 5% of employee salary only, it has to be 5% only. You don't have to pay more or less than that. That's one, adva one advantage. But it has a disadvantage also. Okay. And a defined benefit plan is you promise to pay an agreed amount. Okay. You pay, uh, uh, you, you promise to pay some amount to your employee. To do this, we have a formula. Okay. This is the formula and you must remember it. Salary at retirement multiply by number of years work divided by 60 years. Why 60 years? Because 60 year is the year of retirement. That is the age when most of the people retire. You are not supposed to work beyond 60 years. I'm talking from the point of employees, not employer. If you have your own business and all, that's a separate thing, separate story. But for employees, the maximum age of retirement is 60 years. That's why number of years worked, divide by 60 years, multiply by your salary at retirement. Okay. This is your annual pension income that each employee will receive through this formula. The, the, the difference comes here. The difference between contribution and benefit comes here. Last point. Entity has an obligation to pay extra fund into the pension plan to meet the promised level of pension benefit. Whereas in contribution plan, you don't have any obligation. It's fixed contribution. But here, contribution is not fixed. It can keep, it keeps changing. It has to meet your promised level of pension benefit. That means sometimes you have to contribute more, sometimes you have to contribute less. It keeps changing. But contribution is fixed. It's only 5% of salary is 5% of salary. So this is the only difference. So in the exam, if they ask you, you have to look for this difference, whether this difference is there or not. What is that difference? Whether there is an obligation to pay extra fund or not. If you have an obligation, it's a defined benefit plan. If you don't have an obligation, it's a contribution. Okay. Now let's do a small question before we move on to the accounting part of Define benefit plan. Test your understanding one. So in test your understanding one, what you are supposed to do is, you are supposed to identify whether the particular 
fund is a defined benefit plan or a defined contribution plan okay now be prepared for this type of questions okay in the exam why because this is a very important question in your is 90 because if you go wrong here everything else goes wrong you first clearly need to identify whether the fund is a identified sorry whether it's a defined benefit plan or a defined contribution plan because the way of accounting is different as we have seen it earlier right how would you identify it there are certain keywords the keyword is obligation whether you have an obligation are you paying a fixed contribution or you have an obligation to pay beyond that you have to look for this sometimes let me tell you sometimes it's not easy it's not very clear cut you need to read more you need to read more and more information and see it is going towards which one which one has more information whether it is whether it has more and more obligation or the obligations are less depends on de depend on the number of the points given to you so let's read this case study i'm not going to read it line by line that you can do it right you can do that on your own i'll just summarize the key points from this case study and i will write i will write the proper answer for you on the screen okay because you need to know how to write an answer like this where there are no calculations no numbers you need to know how to write a theory and this is a very clear cut theory it's, it's, it's based on your knowledge okay so here in first paragraph Dara has Dara went into some pension scheme right and the name is the fund the name of the plan is the fund okay he's providing this to his employees now Dela makes monthly contributions into the fund that are equal to a set percentage of the salary cost looks like it's towards contribution but guys do not be too quick to jump to the conclusion you cannot identify from your first paragraph you need to read the entire case study second paragraph says okay the fund based on their number of years of service and their final salary now it looks like more like defined benefit plan because it's talking about year of service and final salary and all those things right third paragraph is the key one the fund is voluntary and Dela can cancel it at any point fourth talks about history what is the history Dela has a history of paying above the national average okay and also it has won many awards like top employer from the national uh, press he has been seen as a good citizen with a positive uh, coverage and all right so now what do you think after reading all this i know you have one answer right all of you must be having either defined benefit either contribution keep it to yourself do not be so quick to write your answer like that in sbr if this question was asked in your exam as it is direct question whether it's a defined benefit or a defined contribution at least around five to six marks this question will be asked it's never asked for one or two marks this is a professional level paper they will never ask you to they will never ask a question for one or two marks please understand that do not expect a question that just says this or that and you just need to write whether it is no you have to give reasons proper reasons why you came up to that answer and for that reasoning you are going to get the marks let's say this question is for five marks out of the five marks four marks will be given only for your justification your reasons and only one mark for your final answer to say whether it's a contribution or a benefit plan and most of the students throw away this valuable marks by just writing that there's a defined benefit or it's a defined contribution how will they write they will just say they have an obligation to pay to contribute beyond or contribute more than the fixed percentage therefore it's a defined benefit or they are paying a fixed contribution therefore it's a contribution plan that's not enough you are given this case study you have to use the information from the case study and write your answer to get the full marks that's how any sbr questions needs to be answered not just sbr any SCCA paper needs to be answered like that you have to make use of the case study otherwise you are not going to get the full marks even if you're right technically 
So somewhere you have studied about obligation, right? From your not while you were going through your textbook. But when you came here, now you are given more information. So you make good use of both the things your knowledge as well as this case study and then answer so now i'm going to write an answer for this okay let's let, let's uh, write the answer okay so what do you think? How are you going to start? You have the case study in front of you. Okay. So do you think uh, they will have a sufficient fund, sufficient assets will be there in the fund to pay the retired employees? Do you think? No, there could be a possibility that this fund might not have the sufficient assets, right? To pay the Benefit to the retired employees. Let's say the final salary increases or the life expectancy increases, then it's not possible that the fund will have the assets, right? Deller, you have to talk about the risk. Who is bearing the risk? Deller is going to bear the investment risk if it continues with the fund. Why? Because he has to make, he has the need to make up for any shortfall. If there is, if the fund is not having sufficient asset, he has to pay. He have to contribute more than the fixed amount. You understanding? So let me write it. And by the way, when you're writing answers, understand how many points you are writing. Because based on the points, you are write, going to write your answers in paragraphs. One point in one paragraph. If you're writing three points, it will be in three different paragraphs because you have to write your answers in paragraphs. Please build this habit of writing answers in paragraphs from day one, not when you are writing your revision kit, not when you are doing your mocks at the last stage of your preparation. No. The reason I am emphasizing on this more is because many of you, many of you do not do that. You do not follow the proper guidelines while answering. Even though technically you are right, you know the answer. But the way you present your answer, mind you, are going to give you additional marks. Your professional marks are based on the way you give, write your answers, your professional marks. Okay. So it is possible. You can, you just see how I'm answering. You do not need to write the answer because the answers are already given in your revision kit behind the textbook. Or sorry, behind the revision kit answers are there. So you do not need to this answer never memorize answers it will not help you because every case study is going to be different okay you are not never going to get the same case study mind you and there is no point you're just going to waste your valuable time okay but what you can what you have to do is while i'm writing the answer you need to see how i'm writing the answer how many paragraphs i'm using how i'm going from one paragraph to the next okay and the key points in the answer that's what you need to look for that's it did you understand the case study? Are you using the good study of a uh, good use of the case study? And are you coming up with the proper conclusion? That's it. Okay, so now this is the first paragraph. I'm having an issue here. It is possible that there will be insufficient assets. Okay, in the fund. Make sure that you read the case study properly before you come to this answer. Okay, to pay the benefits okay in the fund to pay the benefits due which is due to whom to the retired employees okay 
how how it can have an insufficient asset because your final salary might change you don't know about it from now your life expectancy might rise so this can cause an insufficient assets in the fund right particularly so this is like you are giving a reason I know this is taking a little bit time but uh, this is important because you are at your earlier stage so I thought it's important that I write the answer for you rather than me just copy pasting the answer because it's not going to help in any way okay. I've expanded say rise now You have to talk about the risk. Due to this, Deller is going to have bear an investment risk and also actuarial risk, right? So because of this, this is in the same point by the way. That's why we are in one first paragraph only. Because of this, we are facing a risk. Okay, it's important who faces the who bears the risk. Deller therefore bears. Okay. actuarial and investment risk okay why because if it continues with the fund it would need to make up for any shortfall if they continue with this fund if there is any shortfall in the fund deller has to pay that additional amount in the fund to come up with the amount to pay to the retired employees right if it continues with the fund see how i'm using the case study we are mentioning about the fund here right it would need to make up for any shortfall now we are in the second paragraph explaining the second point before i go to the second point in the second paragraph let me ask you this question by reading this what can i understand is it a contribution plan or a benefit defined benefit plan what comes to your mind it's a defined benefit plan defined benefit why because in the defined benefit plan only you have to make for the shortfall you understanding if there is any shortfall you have to make up for it this is a property of a defined benefit plan not a contribution plan second point will also justify that but friend point okay although the fund is voluntary you see they have mentioned in some third or fourth paragraph i will show you here you see the fund is voluntary and they can cancel you see how i'm using this in my answer this is what i wanted to show you by writing the answer but not all the time i'll be writing uh, full fledged answers for you wherever it's short wherever you know i i think it's important i will write answers otherwise you can you know calculations and all i usually don't so although the fund is voluntary you see i'm using my case study here rather than just memorizing from textbook and just answering you know although the fund is voluntary and can be cancelled and can be cancelled 
Della has a history of remunerating. Focus on their history. It's very important because it will tell you about the obligation. Della has a history Della has a history of what? Remunerating. Okay. Della has a history of remunerating its employees. I'm not going to write the full answer here. I'll just write. I'll just tell you the answer. So they have the history of remunerating its employees above the national average. Right. And it has a strong reputation as a good and an honest employer also. So what does this lead to? It leads to constructive obligation. The word constructive obligation. What is the meaning of constructive obligation? You don't have to write the meaning, but you need to know what is the meaning of it. Della has a constructive obligation because of the history, right? Because they have been doing in the history. See, constructive obligation means when you have been doing some kind of practices in the past, it is expected of you in the future also that you will be doing the certain thing. If, even if it's voluntary, if you are paying someone above the national average, it is expected this year also you will pay. You will do the same thing. So then it becomes an obligation. That obligation is known as constructive obligation, not legal obligation. There are two types of obligation. One is legal, which is by law. Second is constructive, which is based on your past. So this is the constructive. Which, which is based on your history, which is based on your past constructive obligation. Make sure the word obligation is there in your answer. It needs to be there for you to differentiate between contribution plan and benefit plan. Okay, constructive obligation to continue with the fund. Because if they do not continue with the fund, how can they pay their employees above the national average? You understanding to continue with the fund. You understanding and to ensure that its level of assets is sufficient now now it's the time when you're writing a final answer which is in one line one sentence you see your last paragraph will be always be very short because it's always writing the main answer whether it is this or that so two paragraphs two reasons one you are saying about the risk second paragraph says about you don't have an obligation you sorry you have an obligation so third, this is how you write your answer when you're writing a conclusion as a result of the above. You see, you have been justifying your answer now. This is how you justify and this is how you need to write all your SBR answer. Okay, the fund should be what accounted for as a you tell me define benefit plan so the keywords here are constructive obligation and defined benefit plan okay you see here the question is advise whether the fund is defined benefit or defined contribution this is your answer but this requirement you are always answering it in the last paragraph this is the nature first is always reasons one two three reasons depending on number of the marks how many reasons right so that's it now we are going to go for the accounting of contribution and accounting of defined benefit plan Accounting for defined contribution plan. This is very simple compared to defined benefit plan and most of our work is on defined benefit plan. So we can quickly go through this here. Whatever the contribution you make, it is recorded as expense in your PNL account, right? Employment expense in each period. And but you need to remember one thing. Sometimes the sometimes the amount that you are contributing okay and the cash you are actually paying might differ so when it differs accrual or prepayment arises right 
sometimes it might not be paid but most of the time the contribution that you have paid is taken as an expense okay but if your cash paid does not equal to your value of contribution for that period then that difference is taken as an accrual or a prepayment now i'll do a small question to show you the accrual and prepayment concept in defined contribution plan before we move on to accounting for defined benefit plan test your understanding too and this is a defined contribution scheme this is one of the easiest okay here you have to calculate the pension expense for 2006 and also accrual and prepayment okay sometimes they might not write accrual or prepayment you have to identify so let's read this an entity makes a contribution to the pension fund of employees at the rate of 5% of gross salary okay and the salary is sorry uh, the entity pays 10,000 per month into this pension scheme okay with any balance being paid in the first month of the following accounting year they have given you the amount of wages and salaries which is 2.7 million okay so this 2.7 million is your salary gross salary and the amount the contribution that you have to make is five percent okay but actually they are paying ten thousand per month so you see there's a difference first let's calculate the expense okay which will go to your profit and loss account which is five percent of your 2.7 million okay which is 135,000 this will go as an expense to PNL. okay but the cash that you have paid is different okay in your statement of financial position see whenever they tell you about expense or asset you always need to identify two places PNL and statement of financial position where will it go okay in the PNL, it is this is recorded as an expense in your statement of financial position I'm using the short form SOFP, okay? Statement statement of financial position. Here, there's a difference, okay? Wait. What is the what is the cash that you have paid? Ten thousand per month. So ten thousand into twelve is one hundred and twenty thousand. You see, these two are not aligning with each other. This is the cash paid in the year. Cash paid. But expense is 135,000. Expense is more than the cash pay. So the difference is 15,000, right? This 15,000 is accrual. Accrual. This 15,000 is recorded in your statement of financial position as, a, as accrual under your liabilities. It will go under your current liabilities. 15,000 is accrual. But most of the time, if you are lucky enough, you might get this in your exam, but it is defined benefit plan that is mostly asked in SBR because that is the tough one because it has lots of rules and regulations compared to this one. But you need to know both. So now we'll be moving on to define benefit plan. We are over with defined contribution plan. Th this, is, this is just that. You just need to know it is an expense. Balance will go as a prepayment or accrual in your statement of financial position. Only these two things you need to remember. That's it nothing major and nothing uh, tricky in this area so now let's move on to accounting for defined benefit plan accounting for defined benefit plan so now we are going to start from the place of statement of financial position where do we record this earlier we have seen that if it's a defined contribution plan we record it as an expense in pnl okay with the prepayment and the accrual part going to statement of financial position now for this okay in the statement of financial position what we do is we record define benefit plan as a long time liability okay and this long term liability is measured at present value this is the difference you see the difference between defined benefit and defined contribution in defined contribution it goes as an expense in PNL, whereas in defined benefit, it goes as a long term liability at present value. Why? 
please recall back when we uh, differentiated defined benefit and defined contribution we told defined benefit has an obligation you have an obligation right you have an obligation towards your employees so because of this because the entity has an obligation to its employees you record it as a long term liability anything which is an obligation is a liability and this is a long term liability remember it's a pension right over the long time period you are going to pay this pension therefore it's a long term liability measured at present value okay next what about the contributions that you make into the plan entity is going to make this regular contributions okay and through this contributions okay this contributions will be invested and you are going to generate returns that means entity has assets that is held within the pension plan there are two things that you need to remember when you are dealing with defined benefit plan number one one is a liability the other part to it is an asset so you have a def uh, sorry benefit li uh, defined benefit liability and a defined benefit asset there are two things and this asset you recognize it at fair value because of that contribution that you are putting in the pension plan it generates returns okay this means that the entity has assets held within the pension plan and it is measured at fair value so assets at fair value liability at present value you need to know these two things when you are dealing with defined benefit plan if you are not understanding this at the moment do not worry because we are going to do questions we are going to do lots of questions until the concept becomes clear to you what is a defined benefit asset and a defined benefit liability because you need to know these two things you are going to deal with these two things in your exam and mind you you have this part of your is 19 coming in exam it has a very high chance of coming in exam because this standard is not dealt in your financial reporting f7 this is a new topic this standard is introduced in your sbr standards which are not tested in financial reporting has a higher chance of coming in sbr so you have to have to have to be prepared for is 19 you you can expect a question on is 19 i think almost all the papers if you see the past paper have is 19 part of is 19 there and sometimes if you are not very sure from the beginning things can get very complicated this is a little tricky this standard because sometimes it's very confusing whether it's a asset or a liability sometimes it's very confusing whether it's a defined benefit plan or a defined contribution plan sometimes you record it in wrong places because there are many parts to it which are coming up next as i proceed you'll see then on the statement of financial position how do you recognize it earlier i told you have an asset you have a liability so what do you do normally conceptual framework says you cannot offset asset and liability correct asset you have separately below that you write liability and blah 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 you list all your liabilities right but when it comes to is 19 is 19 tells you have to offset your asset from your liability that means you have to report the net position the pension obligation gets netted off against plan asset and you only report the net position on your statement of financial position the best way to learn this kind of standards where there are too many rules is okay just learn the rule okay pick up a question and start applying that what you have learned in the question that is the best way to study and to know that what you have learned you are actually applying it understanding so go and see where you can net off your asset plan obligation and plan asset just that much is enough in the beginning stage because you are still at the beginning stage you don't know there are so many things curtailments amendments remeasurement service cost all those things are coming up then you have to see if your obligation is more than asset what is the position if your asset is more than obligation what is the position if the obligation exists the asset that plan is a deficit right and most of the time most of the time this is the usual situation you can expect this 
that means it's a liability right so you record a liability in your statement of financial position if the opposite is there where asset exists the obligation it's a surplus asset is need, asset needs to be recognized in the statement of financial position okay memorize these two points what happens if obligation is more than asset what happens if asset is more than obligation where you record how you record you need to know all those things now we are moving on to year on year moment okay you need to know this pro forma there is going to be a pro forma which will be presented to you you need to memorize this because the questions that you are going to get you can expect this type of questions you have to deal with numbers here it's a numerical question okay always your starting is from your brought forward balance net deficit or asset brought forward remember it's a net the word net means deduct your asset from obligation it's not the other way around it's always obligation minus asset it's never the other way around understand this don't confuse yourself it's always obligation minus asset obligation minus asset whether it's brought forward or closing balance if it's a positive figure if it's a positive figure that means obligation is more it's a net deficit if it's a negative figure it's a net asset that means your asset is more okay that's why you can see that the first one is just positive x and the next one where it is a asset it's in bracket because negative figure right it could be both positive or negative figure anything okay be prepared for both next you need to memorize this this is important very important this is the key to your is 19 you can see net interest component you have to add your net interest component to your net deficit or net asset always your net interest will be on the opening balance you will be given the percentage in everything whatever the interest is then service cost we are going to go through each of this in detail what is net interest what is service cost what does it comprise things like that service cost also you have to add contributions into a plan always a deduction it doesn't matter whether it's a asset or a liability it's always a deduction contribution into plan then benefits paid has no impact i will tell you why later on explanations are there for each and every point don't worry but this pro forma you need to memorize it benefits paid has no impact so you don't add you don't deduct and the balance once you find the total okay there is one more part we we'll leave it and the last one okay you can see a remeasurement component there right this remeasurement component is you need to find it out at the end why it's a balancing figure you will always find the difference between after you add your net interest service cost contribution you deduct you will find a balance okay and this balance will not be equal to your year end balance that is your closing balance right here also you'll be given you'll be given both the balances by the way in your exam you don't have to worry opening as well as closing so you'll be given two obligation and two assets one is opening obligation opening asset one is closing obligation and closing asset and when you're deducting please check the dates whether it's opening or closing because opening obligation is to be deducted from opening asset only it's not the other way around sometimes students do that also the opening obligation they deduct it by closing asset no opening opening and closing closing once you find that closing balance also you will see there's some difference that difference is known as remeasurement component that's a balancing figure always okay and if you don't get any figure if if it's exactly the same then that's good there is no remeasurement but there is always a remeasurement component okay they will i have hardly seen any question where they did not give a remeasurement component there has been always a remeasurement component to it you can take up your exam papers and check questions on is 19 it has that's a balancing figure okay now we are going to go in depth of each what is this net interest service cost contribution benefits remeasurement starting with net interest that is the starting point this net interest is an expense why see think why are we charging net interest 
it's an obligation right obligation means it's a long term liability like how when we take a long term bank loan we always have an interest to it right we add interest on that loan same way if you think it in that way that's why we are taking this interest component you understanding so this is charge to profit and loss that means it's a, it is an expense normally interest is an expense right this is also an expense which goes to pnl okay if it's a liability okay that's why you can see bracket right or asset in bracket y if it's a liability you add the interest if it's a asset you deduct the interest is the opposite definitely we are going to do questions on this okay but for now you need to know the concept first before we jump to the questions discount rate will be given to you you just have to apply that discount rate on the opening balance that's it opening net balance by the way not on obligation not an asset obligation minus asset whatever it is that's it net interest is very easy very simple so you can never go wrong here next part is the confusing part because it has three elements to it service cost service cost number one okay all of this are taken as an expense only whether it's a net interest or service cost this is also taken in pnl as an expense but it has three elements number one current service cost current means this year okay what is the increase in the present value remember first time when we started is 99 told you it's an obligation you record it as a present value at present value so when there is an increase in this present value of obligation your cost will increase right now you have to pay your employees more pension that is the meaning of increasing present value of obligation arising from the employee service in the current period maybe you are taking more employees now right if you are taking more employees means you have to pay more pension now this year so this is taken as a current service cost it's an expense next past service cost this is in the past one year back this is also taken this year this is the same thing okay change in the present value of the obligation for the employee service but in the prior period that means last year in the past not this year why it can change why do you think this can change why in the past year are we talking because of resulting from when plan amendment or curtailment what does it mean see sometimes plan amendment or curtailment means when your employees are reducing that means maybe your employees let's say they decided to leave your job leave the job this year that means they are not you don't have an obligation to pay them pension any longer right so your pension plan you see is changing this is known as plan amendment or curtailment but but we have a separate this thing it's it's in detail we are going to study plan amendment or curtailment okay in uh, in few minutes but for now you know plan curtailment means when there's a change in the plan it could be for any reason let's say the simplest reason employees are leaving that they are being terminated so you don't have to pay them any longer that means you are saving on that cost pension right so this is taken as past service cost this is also added in your expense in this year's pnl with the current service cost so current service cost plus past service cost and any gain or loss on settlement this also you have to add what is gain or loss on settlement we'll go to that okay in detail now past service cost i want to explain this in more detail okay this means there has been an improvement in the benefits why improvement in the benefits because your costs are reducing if employees are leaving means you have to you are saving on your pension now that's where the benefit curtailment now what is the meaning of curtailment significant reduction of reduction in the number of employees that are covered by that pension plan maybe employees are made redundant right now when you are recognizing past service cost okay you need to recognize it at the early see for past service cost another rule is there current service cost no issue whatever the cost this year you recognize it but when it comes to past service cost you need to recognize it at the earlier of these two things number 
when that plan amendment or curtain occurs or when the entity recognizes the related restructuring cost or termination benefit whichever of these two is earlier on the earlier date at that date you have to recognize your past service cost you have to check which of these two are earlier okay you need to know this rule then now settlement the last one right gain or loss on settlement that also comes under service cost settlement occurs when an entity enters into a transaction to eliminate the obligation for a part or all of the benefits under that plan what is the meaning of this for example employee may leave the entity and join a job elsewhere right so this payment okay the payment is made from that pension plan to the pension plan operated by the new employer you understanding earlier it was in your company now that person went to another job pension plan will remain but it will change the owner will change now that pension plan is shifted to the new employer that is known as settlement and when you are shifting it to the new employer there are some gain or losses that you are going to incur that gain or loss is recognized as an expense if it's a gain you it's a it, it, it comes under income and if it's a loss is an expense anyway it goes into pnl account only right so now this gain or loss on settlement is the difference between the fair value of the plan assets that that you have paid out obviously because from the asset only you are going to pay out right in that pension plan okay when you are contributing it is generating some asset right it is generating return that is known as plan assets that means it has some assets in that plan from which you are paying to your employees so gain or loss means that fair value of plan asset that you are paying out and the reduction in the present value of the defined benefit obligation why when you are paying your pension plan to someone else when it's shifting your obligation is reducing right you don't have to pay your employees that pension any longer so there will be a reduction in the present value of defined benefit obligation so difference between these two is a gain or a loss okay this also comes under service cost component definitely we are going to do a question to understand this better with numbers with, num with numbers is always better now contributions into the plan this uh, this is easy okay hardest part is the service cost that is over now rest all is easy so you can take a deep breath okay uh, contributions into the plan these are all your cash payment that you are paying in that plan okay this is just a cash payment it has no impact in your statement of profit and loss so this is very easy you just it has no impact because it's just a cash payment benefits paid okay if you are paying up the benefit it has no impact again why why if you are paying anything out of the plan asset okay it is reducing both your plan obligation and it is reducing your plan assets so both are reducing it does not have impact it does not have an overall impact on the net pension deficit or asset therefore it does not have an impact so just know that benefits paid does not have an impact you do not recognize it anywhere it will be given to you in the exam mind you by the way and most of the students when things are given they always assume because it's given i have to write it somewhere either i have to add it either i have to deduct it don't do that mistake simply examiners are giving it to you to confuse you not everything needs to be taken in the account benefits paid just ignore it that's it and when you have to give the reasons why this is the reason you can give because it reduces both obligation and asset therefore it does not have a overall impact on the net pension deficit or asset so no impact re measurement component is the next okay this re measurement component comes because the net pension deficit or a net pension surplus could be anything right will differ from the amount calculated by the actuary as the current year end who is this actuary 
he is a person he is a qualified person or you can say he is an expert in valuation valuing all this uh, defined benefit asset and defined benefit plan why why do you need a third person to value this it's very complex in nature all these things looks very easy in theory trust me in reality this is one of the toughest job and it's very complex process so you need an expert on this to give a valuation and when they value they value it based on some estimation and it's not often the same that you have calculated as net pension deficit or net pension asset surplus there will be difference always some difference maybe difference is huge maybe difference is small if the difference is small it's good if the difference is huge it's not a good sign but anyway why that difference is number 1 as i told you the actuary is calculation okay of the value of the plan obligation or asset is based on some assumptions they have their own assumptions what is those assumptions life expectancy they see what is the life expectancy of the employees how long are they going to survive 50 years 60 years 40 years the more they expand the more obligation will increase and final salary of course and every year mind you this assumption keeps changing it never remains fixed what you assumed last year will not be same this year it it will keep changing it might go up or down next the actual return on plan asset is different from the amount taken to pnl as part of the net interest component because of asset curtailment uh, or amendment right now what you need to know is where this remeasurement component will go so this this difference is known as remeasurement this will go in other comprehensive income not in your pnl it never goes in your pnl it's always under other comprehensive income an item that will not be reclassified to profit or loss in future period you need to understand remember my first lecture when i started with conceptual framework i told you there are two types of item those items that are on the other comprehensive income but in the future can be reclassified to profit and loss and the other types of items that will not be reclassified so this one is the one which is not reclassified to profit and loss in the future period most of the time uh, most of the uh, standards that i uh, that are, that are there in sbr are components that can be reclassified only very few standards are there which cannot be reclassified one is is 19 is 19 this remeasurement component only this remeasurement component goes under other comprehensive income so this should make your work easier the rest everything goes in the profit and loss account current service cost past service cost gain or loss on settlement net interest right now now conceptual framework you see you need to know these reasons because in your exam they will ask you questions on conceptual framework never leave conceptual framework alone you don't deal with conceptual framework in isolation i conceptual framework needs to be involved in every stand because from conceptual framework only they have built all the standards the basis the foundation is conceptual framework so is 19 okay says why remeasurement component cannot be recorded under pnl why number 1 because defined benefit plan is long term in nature pension is not something that you are paying them daily or you are paying them today or next year no you are calculating it every year and when they retire at the end you pay them the final amount it's a long term in nature okay so the board believes therefore that any short term fluctuations in profit or loss it's inappropriate to recognize in short term fluctuation in profit see profit and loss is uh, keeps changing daily right it's, it's it's for the short term so recognizing this remeasurement which is long term in nature in the pnl is not appropriate because short, profit and loss deals with short term fluctuations so this one point you can write in your exam if they ask a question on conceptual framework why is 19 says no to pnl because this protects the statement of profit or loss as the primary source of information about entity's financial performance in the period next 
Therefore, the measurement is not reclassified to PNL. Because the board argues that there are no clear basis to determine the amount or the timing of reclassification. No one can tell what is the amount of reclassification. Can you tell? It's a long term in nature. How can you predict? What will be the reclassification in 10 years, 20 years? How can you predict today? Not also the timing. You don't know which time. Therefore, you do not. Now, whatever I have discussed till now, we are over with it. Accounting for defined benefit plan. Now, this is a summary. So, whenever you get confused, you can always refer back to the summary. Okay. Defined benefit plan has three parts. Profit or loss, statement of financial position, and other comprehensive income. In profit or loss, service cost will go, net interest component will go. Service cost has three parts again. Current service, past service, gain or loss on settlement. Net interest is taken on the opening balance. Opening net balance, right? After you deduct obligation from asset. Other comprehensive income or the re-measurement component will go and statement of financial position plan obligation planned asset asset ceiling what is this asset ceiling is the next topic right now before we we move on to the next topic that is amend uh, plan amendment and curtailment we need to do questions on this service cost net interest remeasurement and all this so now let's do questions Illustration one, define benefit plan. So in this question, we are supposed to determine the net plan obligation or asset because we don't know whether it's a net plan obligation or asset, right? We don't know whether obligation is more or asset is more. On two dates, one is 31st December 2004 and the other one is 2005. And the amounts to be taken to see this and means you have more than one requirement. Okay, and the amounts to be taken to profit or loss or other comprehensive income for both financial years. Okay, now the following information is provided in relation to defined benefit obligation. Sorry, defined plan operated at 1st of Jan 2004. The present value of obligation is 140 million and fair value of plan asset is 80 million. Okay, this is the opening balance. And then you have been given the discount rate of the two years, the current and the past service cost, benefits paid, contribution, present value of obligation, and fair value of plan asset. Okay. This is the one of the easiest question. Okay. But in your exam, don't expect such an easy question. Because this is the starting. Okay. So that's why this has been made easier in your textbook. It's there. In your SBR textbook, you will get this question. So now we just need to put the numbers remember that perform i have presented to you exactly that performer you need to perform so we are going to do that now okay we have to find the net position so let's start how are you going to stop this question okay in your statement of financial position okay i'm going to write it for two separate years 2004 and 2005 on this column okay dollar million and dollar million okay we start with always obligation i told you obligation minus asset so present value of planned obligation and fair value of planned assets So what is the present value of plan obligation for 2004? It's given here as 140 million. 140. Wait, I think. Sorry, you have to look for the 31st December balance of 2004 and 2005. 200. Okay. And 230 is for 2005. So 200 and 230. Okay. And fair value of planned asset is 120 and 140, which you have to deduct. Okay. 
now is your net position closing net liability which is 80 here and here it's 90. Now tell me why this is a closed net liability. Why isn't it a closing net asset? Because this is a positive figure. Both of these are positive figure. Obligation is more than assets. So whenever it's a positive figure, it's a liability, net liability. You need to remember this. Now we are done with the, this amount will go in your statement of financial position as closing net liability for 2004 and 2005. Now we are moving on to statement of profit and loss and other comprehensive income. Okay. I'm just writing the short form here. Okay. Now tell me from this list which items will go in the statement of profit and loss from this uh, table. Current and past service cost. Right. This will go then. Net interest. See, net interest is not given in the list, but we have studied it. You will get it from the discount rate. This also will go as net interest. Right? This amount will go. What else? Just see the list and tell me. What about the benefits paid? No impact. What about the contributions into plan? It's a cash. It has to do in your. If you are writing a cash statement, there you have to deduct this. Because this is a statement of profit and loss, you don't have to write it anywhere. So, no impact in your statement of profit and loss. This too, we have already done. We are done with it. Right? So, the re measurement component. What else? Next is re measurement component. Don't forget this. This you will get as a balancing figure. So, it will not be given to you in the beginning. This will go in OCI, other components of income. Right. So now with this idea, you can proceed to your this one. Okay. We are starting with profit or loss first. Before we touch other comprehensive income, we always start with profit or loss. Okay. For 2004 and 2005. Okay. Service cost. Net interest. You can write in any order, it doesn't matter. Okay. If you see, see in that service cost, it already included both current and past. So you don't have to uh, separate it. So it's 30 and 32. Okay. 30 and 32. What about net interest? You have to work out how. See, when they told discount rate at the start of the year, that means on 1st of Jan, you have to take on that balance. That's why you have been given this 140 and 80 million. This is the purpose for it. Because on this, you have to find the discount rate. So 4% on that also on net, not on 140 and 80 separately. You deduct 80 from 140. That is 60. And on that 60 million, apply the percentages, 4% and 3%. Okay. So somewhere you can write or maybe I'll show the working here 140 minus 80 it is 60 right on this you apply the percentages 4% for 2004 and 3% for 2005 okay 4% so 60 into 4% is 2.4 and if it's 3% Okay, it's 0 0.18. Sorry. Uh, wait a minute. Okay. When you applied for 2005, okay, when you take it for 2005, you still take the same interest as 2003. Why? You don't take 3%.
because I told you that net interest you always take in the opening balance. So whatever you have in 2004, it will be carried forward in 2005 because it's always in that opening balance. That is 140 minus 80. It will not keep changing year on year. Every year it will not keep changing. So it will be 2.4 only. Net interest will not uh, net interest will not change. Okay. So if you add all this 30 and 2.4, it will be 32.4, and here it will be 34.4. Now are the comprehensive income. Here only the remeasurement component will go. Okay. Now, how do you get it? See, for this remeasurement component, you have to do a separate working else in a separate space. You will not get it here. Okay. So, I will keep some space and I will go down and I will start here. Okay. 2004 2005 okay now you always start with the obligation minus asset right obligation at 1st of jan asset at 1st of jan when you are doing for remeasurement you have to take this is the way you do forget about what we have done earlier here when we were putting the figure in the statement of financial position we took the 31st december's balances here this and this, this and this. But for remeasurement, we take the opening balance. Obligation at 1st of Jan, asset at 1st of Jan. So obligation at 1st of Jan in 2004 is what? They have already given here 140 and 80. One forty and deduct eighty. Okay. When you go to two thousand five, okay, the obligation will be first of Jan's. See the closing balance. Okay, of two thousand four is the opening balance of two thousand five. 31st December 2004's balance will be the 1st of Jan 2005's opening balance for obligation. That's why you take 200 here. Okay. And then for asset is the same way. You take this 120. This becomes opening balance for the 2005. So here it is 60. Here it is 80. Okay. This is the net obligation. You see, it's net obligation because it's a positive figure. Obligation is more. This is at 1st of Jan. Now, take the net interest on this. Now, when you're taking the net interest, okay, you can take for 2004 and 5 separately. 4% for 2004 and 3% for 2005. This is when we are doing the remeasurement part. Okay, so on the 60, 16 to 4%, which is 2.4. Okay, here it will be 80 into 3% again is 2.4. Now, service cost. It is 30 and 32, right? You can always refer back to the question. Then contributions into the plan will come. This is that performer we are performing. Remember that performer? We start with obligation, net obligation, take the interest, take the service cost, take the contribution, benefits paid have no impact. Then the balance is remeasurement component. So service, uh, contributions into the plan. Contributions are how much? 25 and 30 million, right? 25 and 30. 
25 and 30 it will be deducted because your plan asset or plan obligation reduces benefits paid see even if it has no impact you still have to write this and show nil you are going to get one mark for this you have to show like this you just put dash examiner will understand this has no impact but you have to write it okay then i think everything is done the measurement is the balancing figure so i will leave some space for it now net obligation at 31st december closing one so at 31st december net obligation is how much we have already done it here you see this closing net liability we have already done it in the first time this is what you have to take from your statement of financial position 80 and 90 now just do the 60 plus 2.4 plus 30 minus 25 okay if you do that the sum will be something which is not equal to 80 okay let's do that and see how much are we getting okay take out your calculator 60 plus 2.4 plus 30 minus 25 which is 67.4 okay you see you are getting 67.4 this is not equal to 80 so the difference if you deduct 80 from 67.4 it will be 12.6 same way you have to do for this also on this side also for 2005 and the balance that you are going to get is 5.6 so this 5.6 and this 12.6 will go in your other comprehensive income that's why we have to do this long working just to find that balance so now go back to your other comprehensive income put this figure there 12.6 and 5.6 now when you are doing workings when you are doing calculations like this where you have to refer to some working and working is in some other place you can label it like this let's say working one okay so examiner will know that this came from working one and immediately they will go to working one here write this as working one label it you have to label your workings okay never show your full workings in your main answer it has to be separate from that main table main other comprehensive income it has to be somewhere else but you have to label it if you don't label it they will not understand how this 12.6 and 5.6 came because you are going to get the maximum amount of marks for your working not for your final one answer only one mark you're going to get for that final answer now add your profit add your oci and get tci total comprehensive income for the year so 32.4 plus 12.6 is 45 and here it is 40 okay you need to add this to add this to that's it this is what the examiner was asking you and you are done so this is how you have to do every question if the question is straightforward like this now we are moving on to illustration to the next question illustration to this question is on past service cost as you can see here okay this is a little easier okay you just have to answer whether how this 270 will be recognized okay explain how the additional benefits are accounted for in the financial statements of the entity but you need to know a little bit about this company so this company operates a pension plan okay which is a two percent of the final salary each year okay but on first of jan 2005 they have changed it to 2.5 percent okay but 
they also have one condition the condition is employees must have worked for at least five years to have this improvement to get this benefit right at the date of the improvement the present value of the additional benefit from 1st of jan 2001 to 2005 are given employees with more than five years is 150 employees with less than five years okay let's say two years is at 120 the total is 270 okay now your job is to tell how this will be recognized the you always have to look at the verb of the question okay the verb says explain explain means you have to write this is not a calculation question which we have done previously in illustration one this you have to explain this is a past service cost okay so what they are trying to say is they have changed it to 2.5 percent okay now what would be the impact it's a past service cost right so whether it's a current service cost or whether it's a past service cost this year we recognize it as an expense in pnl that's what we we were going through when we were studying past service cost right so that's what you have to write this entity okay the entity you don't have to write the answers there in your answer okay the answer is there in your textbook the answer the sorry the entity recognizes all this 270 million fully okay all 270 thousand immediately see whenever the question asks uh, sorry whenever the question is explained you need to write like this entity recognizes this 270 thousand immediately as an increase as an increase in the defined benefit obligation okay because this is an increase in the defined benefit obligation right following the amendment they have made some amendment some changes amendment means making some changes following the amendment following the amendment to the plan when did they make this amendment on 1st of jan 2005 to the plan on 1st of jan 2005 correct this is not enough this will form part of what this will form part of the service cost component it's a past service right whether past or current it will it will come under service cost so this will form part of service cost component another thing you have to write see they have told some condition right this will only be given when they they work for more than five years but this condition is not when you are recognizing expense okay it doesn't matter whether you fulfill that condition or not even if you work less than five years you still will be applying you still have to recognize this as an expense so that you have to write how are you going to write this in sentence okay so whether or not the benefits have wasted similar thing like this about uh, vesting uh, about conditions and all you are going to study in, uh, later in ifrs2 share based payment okay whether or not the benefits have vested by the reporting date okay is not relevant you have to write it even if it's not relevant you have to write it is not relevant you cannot ignore it like this because you are going to lose your mark if you write it you're going to get that one mark it's not relevant to their recognition as an expense see it doesn't matter 
that condition even if you don't feel it fulfill it still it will be expense to their recognition as an expense in the financial statements i'm writing short form financial statements so that's it at least i think around four to five marks they, they might ask this question this question if they ask you an exam it might come around four to five marks okay now let us go to illustration three which uh, which is about curtailment okay again it has to do with the past service cost only illustration three curtailment okay curtailment you have you have heard this right when we were doing past service cost and there we told that gain or loss on settlement will also be taken as a part of past service cost okay so this question is based on that okay what is the net gain or loss on the curtailment and how this will be treated in the financial statement so this question this uh, case study is about a company who decides to close a business segment so if he closes a business segment means he does not have to pay the the employees will be made redundant right so if the employees will be made redundant they do not have they do not uh, they don't have to pay them further pension benefit after they have been made redundant they will not be paid that further pension benefit and their plan assets will remain in the scheme so that employees will be paid a pension when they reach that retirement age even if they have been made redundant they still will be paid that pension but this pension okay the plan asset still remains there that's why this this is a curtailment without settlement you need to understand this why what is the meaning of settlement settlement means when a employee is joining another company and whatever the plan assets is there in your pension scheme you shift it to the new employer that is known as settlement but here the plan asset still remains in your scheme even if the employee is made redundant so there is no settlement done that's why this is known as curtailment without settlement okay before this curtailment fair value was 500000 the scheme had fair value of 500000 and the present value of obligation was 600000 okay and the curtailment is see curtailment means it will always reduce the present value of, of the future obligation right curtailment will reduce the present value of the future obligation by 10 percent again be very careful by the word whether it's by 10 percent okay by 10 percent means it will reduce by 10 percent that means you have to take 90 percent of the value only which reflects that the which reflects the fact that employees will not benefit from any future salary increases and therefore they will be entitled to a smaller pension that previously estimated whatever previously has been estimated for them that much they will receive any increase in future salary they are not going to get that benefit okay now you have to work out the net gain or loss because this net gain or loss will form a part of the service cost which will go in your profit and loss understood so this is how you do this question okay so before on curtailment curtailment okay it's okay it doesn't matter just ignore my handwriting okay and after okay so now you start with present value of obligation and fair value of assets plan assets so it was 600 and 500 deduct which is 100 okay this is the net obligation okay this net obligation will go in your statement of financial position as current asset as a uh, long-term assets in statement of financial position curtailment means okay this obligation 600 is reduced by 10 percent that means 
10 percent of 600 is 60 so it will reduce by 60 and fair value of asset there is no change it is still there in the plan okay so you reduce this by 60 this has no impact this is then becomes then this 600 becomes 540 this still remains 500 okay this will be 60 and then it will be 40 okay tell me whether this is a gain or a loss this 60 is a gain or a loss it's a gain okay gain you have to write it clearly you have to write in words like this even if it's the number you have to write it in sentence gain on curtailment is 60,000 okay and this will be included as a part of service cost yes service cost company you have to write the place also where it will go service cost because they told how it will be treated in financial statements all your SBR questions are like that only where it will be treated in financial statements where it will be treated in financial statements so service cost components in profit and loss for the year it will go in PL as an exp as, a, as a gain if you don't write this you are going to lose one mark just writing calculations not enough you have to write it in sentence okay so tell me why this is a gain earlier i didn't tell you why it's a gain because your obligation now reduces so when your obligation reduces it's a gain or a loss it's gain for you right your expenses will reduce your expenses will reduce so it's a gain so now we are moving on to test your understanding three test your understanding three fraser okay this question we have three years 2001 2002 2003 but normally in your exam spr exam you will not be given three years you'll be given only two years okay so you can say this question is you have to do a more it's more complex you can see but it's actually not okay this is very similar to your illustration one okay this is purely a question a calculation question because the question asked see the requirement show how the defined benefit plan would be shown in the financial statements for 2001 2 3 okay and you have been given everything discount rate service cost benefits contribution obligation assets so you just have to do the calculation now okay so if you remember your illustration one you can quickly do this question i don't think it will it should take you let's say five minutes okay so let's quickly do this there we have started with statement of financial position so here also we are going to do the same thing okay financial statement means profit and loss other comprehensive income and statement of financial position this three places so statement of financial position okay 2001 2002 and 2003 okay you will only write the net position okay net asset or net liability but we still don't know let's see so here wait yes you have to just deduct your assets from your obligation so you just deduct this from this it's the same way for this and it's the same way for this so 1350 minus 1200 is 150 it's a net asset or a net liability it's a net liability because your obligation is more than your asset okay same for the next one your asset is less than obligation here also your asset is less than obligation so in all the three years you'll be having net liability this is the normal situation 
net liability is most of the time is more very rarely you will see a situation where you are going to have net asset but you ha you have to know how to deal with both okay 1340 minus 1150 is 190 and for 2003 it is 150 colors we are done with statement of financial position now we are moving on to profit and loss and other components of income I'm using the short form here, but make sure that you write the long form in your exam, okay? So 2001, 2 and 3. Now, tell me from this list what goes in profit and loss. This one will go as net interest. Net interest you will calculate based on discount rate. This also will go. This will go. This will go. Benefits paid. No impact. Contributions will not go. So these are the three things. Sorry, these are the two things that will go. Okay. So we'll start with net interest first. Or service cost, anything is fine. Any order you can write, okay. Service cost, how much? Service, service. 125, 130, 138. Okay. You have to do this question in Excel, by the way, in your exam, okay? Don't use this word. Net interest. When you're working on net interest, it's always in the opening balance. I'm writing here. Don't put it in the closing balance, always. Okay? So, let's say 10%. Discount rate 10%. Okay? What is the present value of obligation and fair value of assets? It's 1 million. And 900 so 1 million minus 900 is 100,000 obligation right net obligation on this 100,000 if you take 10 percent it will be 10,000 okay so 10 because everything all this are in thousands okay so here it's 10 next when you go okay you have to take 9 percent But remember, your obligation will change this time. Okay. Opening. So here, uh, for 2002, okay, you have to take this balance. 150 because this op this um, closing balance of 2001 becomes the opening balance of 2002 so 150 on this 150 you have to take 9 percent how much if you are getting decimals it's up to you it's always better to round it up to whole number right or you can write it as a decimal Take out your calculator and start working. Don't check the answer and tell me. It's 13.5, but they have rounded up, so it's 14. And the last, you have to take this 190. On this 190, you have to take 8%. So 190 into 8%. How much? Take your calculator and start working. 190 into 8%. It's 15.15.2. Okay. But you can take it as a whole number and write 15. Okay. You see? So you are done. Only these two items goes. And PNL. So this amount goes to PNL. 125 plus 110. Sorry, 10 is 135. 144 and 153 now comes your other comprehensive income hold the remeasurement component will go here now you should be very quick in this because we have done many and we have done many questions on this part till now this you have to do a working that pro forma which i have showed you earlier right and then just add your remeasurement with profit and loss you will get your tci this is nothing this is easy so now we have to move on to our remeasurement component part. 
I'll keep some space. Working one. Okay. 2001, 2002, and 2003. Start with your net obligation it's a net obligation already we have done this right see when we are putting for 2001 okay we have to brought bring forward this balance okay 1 million minus 1 million minus 900 this 100,000 This is when we are working out the remeasurement component part. Okay, in your statement of financial position, you put it accordingly year by year. Okay, so now for net obligation, when you are putting for 2002, you are bringing forward this balance and then this. This will become 2002, this will become 2003. That's how it goes in remeasurement component element. It's always like that. If you understood that, you can do any question on remeasurement. Next, net interest, immediately net interest. Now, the appropriate percentages on whatever the amount. 10% on 100, 9% on 150 and 8% on 190. So 10% on 100 is 10 and on 150 it's 14 and it's 50. Whatever you have put it in your profit and loss also you can see this. Service cost it's already given so nothing to worry just put the number 125 130 and 138 contributions this time you have to deduct your contributions because it will deduct both your assets and liability contributions are here 1995 90 it's always deduction by the way Benefits paid. I told you it has no impact, but you just have to show it. Benefits paid has no impact, no impact, no impact. Then comes the remeasurement. It could be gain or it could be a loss, anything. It's the balancing figure. So we'll keep some space for it. And net obligation, we have the closing balance. This closing balance, you can just take the amount from your statement of financial position and put it here. Early, we have done it in the first 150, 190, 100, 150. So just go and put it there. 100. Sorry, I'm sorry. 150, 190, and 150. Okay. So just put, just add up all and see. Okay. If you say, 100 plus 10 plus 125 minus 90 this balance will be different from 150 so that difference is the remeasurement okay here it's 5 here it's minus 9 and here it's 88 i'll show you the first one So here, if you see, if you add up all this 100 plus 10 plus 125 minus 90, the balance comes to 145. And here, closing balance is 150. It's more, 5 more. So that's why this is a positive figure, 5. It will be a gain or a loss. Tell me that. It's a loss. It's a loss. Even though this positive figure looks like positive and you are assuming it's a gain, no. Gain will be negative. Loss will be without uh, this thing, without bracket. Why? Because your net obligation increased at the year end. So it's not a good thing. That's why it's a loss. But here, 2002 and 2003, it's a gain. This 9 and this 88 are gain. Because your obligation reduced at the year end. Okay, you can check on your own. So go back and put this there. 
in the remeasurement part. Okay, five, nine, and eighty-eight, and then do this add and put the total as DCI that you can get it right. Okay. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Something I've explained it earlier went wrong. Wait a minute. No. This is again. Okay. Sorry, this five is a loss actually. It's a loss. Gain are yes, gain are in bracket, losses are without bracket. This is a loss. Yes, and this again. Correct. Yeah, I was right. Yeah, I just got a little confused. I thought I explained you explained it to the other way. Okay, anyway, let's move on to test understanding four. Test your understanding four. TC. So in this, you have been given a defined benefit pension plan. Okay. You have been given some list of items and here you are supposed to explain the accounting treatment for TC for the year 31st March 2003 together with supporting calculations. Whenever a question like this comes, okay, with supporting calculation means major most of your marks are on the explanation part and only small amount of marks are for your calculations. You have to support your explanation with some calculations. That means you have to do both. Okay. So first, let us do the calculations because it's very easy. Because without your calculation, without the numbers, you cannot explain. Okay. This is one of the easiest question in SBR where you have to explain your calculations. So let us do the calculation. Okay, here the net pension obligation at 31st March 2003 was 55 million and 31st March 2002 it was 48 million. Okay, net obligation. Please check its net. That means they have already deducted the plan asset from the plan obligation. Okay, now Compromising the uh, comprising the present value of the plan obligation stated at 100 together with plan assets stated at fair value of 52 million. Okay, most of you I'm sure by now are trying to deduct 52 from 100 and you are you are like sorry uh, this 100 minus 52 is 48. Okay, there is a reason why they have given it fair value separately and the plan obligation separately. But we'll just not touch that point right now. Let us go to the second point. Discount rate. Discount rate is 6.25%. And the actual return on plan asset for the year was 4 million. Current service is 12 million. At 31st March, please read this point very carefully. Okay, this is a tricky point. The rest all is easy. At 31st March 2003, TC granted additional benefit to those currently receiving benefits that are due to vest over the next four years and which have a present value of 4 million at that date. They were not allowed for in the original, they were not allowed in the actual, sorry, in the original actual assumptions. That means there will be some re-measurement component because there's a difference between your valuation and the actual's valuation. They didn't take this into the consideration. And the last, during the year, TC made pension contribution of 8 million. This is your contribution. And paid benefit of 3 million. I'm sure calculation part you'll be able to deal, right? Let us do that. So you start with net obligation brought forward, which is 48. 48 million, right? This one. Mm 
This is the opening balance, 31st March 2002 and 31st March 2003. Okay. Then net interest. is at 6.25% on this 48. So if we apply 6.25% on 48 is 3. Then comes the service cost. Okay. In the service cost, there are two. This breaks down into two. What is it? Current service. Okay, current service cost and past service cost. Current service cost is given in bullet number 3, current was 12. And past service is given as this 4 million. Point number 4. Okay, whenever they make some additional changes, additional benefit, that means it's past service cost. This is the easiest way. They will not write past service costs like clearly in the sentence. But whenever they say some additional benefit is given due to Vester, that means it's past service cost they are mentioning about. Four. Now, contributions. Contributions you have to deduct how much? Eight. It was eight, right? It's eight here. Check. The last point. Eight. And then. 3 million is the benefits which will have no impact. Please do not deduct it. This is the performer which I am performing. Benefits paid nil. It has no, sorry, it has no impact. Dash. Then comes your remeasurement component. Which is a balancing figure. I will leave a space. Then your net obligation, the closing balance. You will be given the opening and the closing balance. Okay. Otherwise, you cannot find the remeasurement component, which is your 31st March 2003 is figure 55. Okay. Now add up. Okay. All this. And Deducted with 55, the balance is remeasurement component, which is 4 in this case. Okay. So now, this is done. Now comes your explanation. I am not writing the full sentence. I am just writing in bullet points. Okay, you have to write in full proper sentences. You cannot write your answers in bullet points in your exam. Okay, you have to write it in different paragraphs. Okay, so first, the best way to explain is go by the order that you have done the calculation. In this way, you are very sure that you didn't miss any point. For example, the first is you started with, I will use a different color pen. Okay, you started with net interest, right? So start with this first. Then you can talk about current service, past service, contribution, benefit, remeasurement, that like that. Okay. So explanation, the discount rate. I think my uh, red uh, red pen is better, right? Yeah, discount rate. So basically, you are explaining here that the discount rate you are applying to the opening balance, which is six point two five percent, which is three million. Okay. So you are writing the amount also in your calculation that the net interest is 3 million and it is charged to. Okay, this will lead to net interest. I'm writing in shortcut, okay, which will go to PNL. This will be charged in the PNL. You have to write this where it will go. This is your accounting treatment. Never forget this. The whole purpose of doing all this is to know in your financial statement where the certain amount is going. This applies to all your IFRS and IA standard in SBR. You have to know what is going where. Next. Next point. Okay. What is the next point? Current service cost. 
current service cost. What about current service cost? This is very easy, actually. Okay. About past service cost, you have to explain a bit. But current service cost will go to PNL as an expense. Right? Now, but you have to write the amount. Please write the amount also. It's 12. Now, past service. In the same paragraph, you can write about past service because they form the part of service cost. Both, right? So below this, you can write past service cost. This also will go into PNL, by the way. But this needs a little bit of explanation. What is it? Past service cost is charged in full usually when the scheme is amended. See, when you amend the scheme, that time you recognize this past service cost. Not okay not when the additional benefits actually vest you don't have to stay for four years if, even if you don't stay for four years you are still you have to recognize it in full the four million okay so i will write it for you here so the next time when you get a similar question you don't forget this okay uh, okay You can write it somewhere, but you have the answers in your book, so you should be knowing this. You can refer back to your answer. Past service causes because you have to know at which date you are uh, charging the past service cost is charged in full usually when the scheme is amended. Okay. When the scheme is amended rather than when rather than with the additional benefits vest did you get this point are you getting this it's very important to get this point here okay next is third paragraph what they have mentioned return on assets another way you can answer this is you can go by this also. Check the points from here. You see here, net obligation, then the discount rate, then the current service, then the past service. Okay. Or you can go through this also. Earlier I've mentioned, right? Go in the order that you have done the calculation. That way also you can do. Okay, I will leave this point. Return on asset. I will return to it in some time. Go to the next point, contribution. contribution what will contribution do contribution of 8 million contribution will reduce your net obligation always it's always no matter whatever the question is contributions will always reduce your net obligation that's why you always deduct contribution you never add next is Next paragraph, benefits paid. Okay. This also always will reduce. You have to write this. Both assets, the scheme assets and scheme obligation. This will reduce both assets and obligation therefore you have to write that it has no impact so have no impact on net obligation
okay what about next next this is the last okay in your statement of financial position don't forget what will go as at 31st march 2003 they will show a net deficit net deficit means liability okay so liability liability of how much check the first point 55 million so now i told you earlier that we have one thing which is left that is return on asset they told where the the actuary valued it without taking into account the past service cost okay but when you calculated you took it so there will be difference that difference is remeasurement component okay roa stands for return on asset okay so there has been a return on asset in excess of the amount identified by the application of the discount rate to the fair value of plan asset that means how do you do that see your fair value has been given as i will highlight it for you 52 million right on this you apply 6.25% okay but actually return is 4 million the the person who have calculated it they valued it as 4 million your valuation will be different so when you value you have to put that 6.25% on that 52 even they even though they say discount rate of 6.25% is relevant to the net obligation you can also apply to the fair value of asset so we are going to take 6.25% on 52 which e which is equal to 3.25 you see this is different from 4 what the values are valued so for the difference 4 minus 3.25 your value according to your valuation it is 3.25 according to what the actuary has valued it is 4 so the difference is your remeasurement component 0.75 this is the d measurement component that's it for this now we will be moving on to test understanding 5 here the requirement is discuss the correct accounting treatment okay now here also you have to do calculation okay so you can read it word by word i'm just going quickly going to go through the figure and we'll start doing questions the calculation and then we'll start writing the answer the correct accounting statement okay so because over okay has a defined benefit pension scheme all this blah 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 okay so contribution is 4 million see how this question is different from the previous here they made the contribution immediately and this question does not even have an opening balance now we'll see how to do a question like this where opening balance is not there contribution you make immediately okay so the actuary has stated net obligation of 0.4 million on 30th june 2004 interest rate is 10% on 1st of july 2003 but 12% in the next year okay the actual return on plan assets was 11% the increased cost is 4.2 million okay increased cost means it has to do with your service cost it could be either current mostly current service cost and past service cost on 30th june 2004 they paid 0.3 million in settlement now this part was not there in your before questions this is a new thing how to deal with settlement present value was 0.2 million but you have settled it for 0.3 you see there's a loss can you identify you have paid more than your present value okay this related to the stuff that were to be made redundant why did they give you this info, piece of information 
to tell you that this is a kirtle meant yes that's why the redundancies were not foreseen at the start of the year so this means you will be having some remeasurement component your actual is valuation and your valuation will be different okay so now we'll do the calculation first which is which is actually working okay your calculation you have to show it as working because the requirement did not tell you to calculate please read the requirement very carefully it says discuss the correct accounting treatment discuss means you have to write when they say calculate then you have to calculate but you still need calculation it does not mean you can escape away from calculation so you have to do the calculation okay i always make it a habit of first doing the calculation and then write okay i hope you are also doing the same so you can write it under working one or anything the remeasurement component okay you start with net obligation you write it even if there is no, no opening balance that has been given you still write it net obligation brought forward there is no none zero immediately see the nature of this question is what do we do in the previous what did we do we always started adding the interest right in the opening but here we don't have to do that because it's zero number one number two they told contributions were made immediately into the scheme that means after it brought forward balance you have to write contribution okay so contribution is you have to deduct contributions yes even if it's zero you have to deduct contribution is how much 4 million you can always refer back to your question so always a good method to always jump back to your case study because you will forget the figure don't try to memorize the figure okay in your exam on your screen questions will be there on one side of the screen on, and on the other side of the screen you will be doing your answers okay if it's calculation on excel and if it's typing the answers it's in ms word now comes your net interest net interest is still there but it is on this 4 million contribution now because you don't have any net obligation now. so it is 10% okay the opening uh, interest weight two interest has been given to you right 10 and 12 which one 10% always the opening so 10% on 4 is 0.4 which you deduct this time it's a deduction because even this contribution is a negative figure right so on that negative 4 if you take 10% it will be minus 0.4 otherwise net interest you keep adding but this time you see it's a negative figure so net interest you will be deducting it then comes your service cost okay current service current service cost is how much 4.2 okay this is your current service cost which you have to add next is your remember the curtailment i told you your present value is 0.3 you have sort to you have paid 0.3 in settlement so you have paid more it's a loss the difference 0.3 minus 0.2 0.1 loss on curtailment of 0.1 this also you will be adding it all these are expenses right current service loss on curtailment only the net interest you are deducting why because this is a negative figure but current service as it is you will write you keep adding you will add loss on curtailment also these are expenses now benefits paid will have no impact okay i'm not writing it here this time remeasurement component is the balancing figure okay net obligation carried forward what is the closing uh, obligation 
it is okay what is the closing obligation 0 0.4 they actually have stated the net obligation was 0 0.4 as a 30 year june 2004 so it is 0 0.4 now if you take the balance will be 0 0.5 okay hold down that's not enough you have to explain okay you have to explain like the previous question you have to explain here also in different paragraphs okay so first you can start with you can start it in any order okay but i always prefer to go by the order so you can start with the contribution first right so you are charging the the interest on the contribution right in other words the term this term is known as unwound unbounding okay so opening net position should be unwound using a discount rate and this net interest goes to PNL. Please don't use short forms like this. This is only for me to explain and save your time. In your exam, you have to write full proper sentence. Okay, that this will go to PNL. Next, current service cost, right? This also will go to current service cost goes again to pnl as an expense there is no past service cost in this question then comes the curtailment curtailment there is a loss on curtailment where will this go again pnl right curtailment should be recognized at the earlier when the curtailment occurs or when the related termination benefits are recognized you have to write that also i didn't write it you have to write it then your remeasurement. Next paragraph, remeasurement. This will go to OCI, other comprehensive income. And it will not be reclassified to PN. Next, statement of financial position. Don't forget this. Students often forget this. Okay. So here it is the present value of the defined benefit obligation. Okay. You can say that is the 0 0.4 million. This will go as net deficit or liability. Okay. You can show your calculation also. Always write the number next to it. What is the net interest? How much of current service goes cost will go to PNL? What is the curtailment loss that will go to PNL? Write the figure in, in your explanation itself. Okay, you need to repeat the figure that you have calculated in your explanation. Okay. Next. Just. Okay. So now we will be moving on to test to understanding six. Test to understanding six is fully theory with no calculation, no numbers are involved. You are going to get a question like this also in your SBR. Mostly I think it's around question four, which asks about conceptual framework. So be prepared for this as well. And mind you conceptual framework can come along with any standard, no matter what standard, okay? So this question is discuss whether the recognition of a net defined benefit liability is in accordance with IS 19 is consistent with conceptual frameworks criteria recognition criteria. This is a very common question. Very common question, not only for IS 19, but for other standards also. It might come for um, IS 16 property plan and equipment. It might come for uh, let's say IS 12 income tax, right? Deferred tax asset. 
it can come for IS38 intangible asset, it can come for any standard. Okay. Wherever you see there is uh, what is it? It's consistent or it is not consistent. Some standards are consistent, some standards are not consistent with conceptual framework. Your job is to justify whether it is consistent or it is not consistent. Okay. So the question is this much. This is a very small question. LIMSEM has a defined benefit pension scheme and actually as measure the present value of the obligation and the fair value of the asset, the scheme is in deficit. That means it's a liability. Okay, it's good that it's a liability. This is a very common uh, position to be, be at. Now, if you see the answer, I have copy pasted the answer for you because if I sit to write the answer, it will waste a lot of time. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pinpoint the main points from that each paragraph okay i'm not going to read word by word that you can do it answers are there it's given it's behind there in your textbook okay you see you see don't panic by checking the length of the answer i know it's big but what you need to do is you need to know how many points you have to write how to start and how to end the answers like this okay so keep reading this okay Take your own sweet time and read it and just give me just give me a uh, one minute. Okay, so I suppose by this time you have read something and you have got some idea. Okay, so you start with conceptual framework, not IS 19. Your starting point is always conceptual framework whenever a question like this is given. This is your starting point number one. Talk much about conceptual framework before we move on to the specific rule in IS 19. Okay, so if you see this, this answer is divided into one, two, three four the separation of line is there because of me copy pasting but it comes in this only fourth paragraph only then five so you see this answer is divided into five separate paragraphs right First paragraph, you will be writing about conceptual framework. First decide that, okay? Like what it talks about recognition. What conceptual, you have to memorize this part. Okay, it's there in my first lecture. If you have missed out my lecture one, please go to my lecture one and check. That, I don't exactly remember the title, but I suppose it, it is conceptual framework. Okay, the recognition part. So you have to talk about the recognition, what conceptual framework says, okay? Then, you have to talk about definition of liability. I'm not going to read it. It's up to you. It's your job to do it. I'm just pinning the keywords. How to write this answer. First recognition from conceptual framework. Okay. You recognize when it meets the definition of an element. Then you talk about the definition of liability. Second, you proceed from the end that same paragraph. Okay. What is the definition of liability? You should know it by heart. You have to memorize it. Each word in definition is very important. For example, present obligation, from past event, to transfer. All this has to be there in your answer because if you miss any of this, your answer will change. Okay. After this point, next when you proceed, now you have to say about those things which are not recognized. Okay. So not all elements are recognized. Do we recognize? No. And, and 
you have to talk about two things. Two R. No, sorry, F R. F stands for faithful representation. R stands for relevant information. Whenever you talk about this, mention relevant information and faithful representation. That means you already recognize when it gives relevant information as well as and faithful representation. Never forget this. In conceptual framework, no matter whatever the standard is, even if another standard comes, this is the same answer you have to give. Maybe that time it might be an asset. Maybe that time it might be an income. Maybe that time it might be an expense. Maybe that time it might be an equity. But this thing does not change. Relevant information and faithful representation. You should never forget this. So in your first paragraph, you only write this much. This is the knowledge part. Okay. Next, immediately jump to IS 19. That means your defined benefit deficit. You start from here. You start by defining this now. Does it meet the definition of a liability or not? You have to say yes, it meets the definition. No, it does not meet the definition. One of the two is correct. In this case, yes, it meets the definition of a liability. Why? The next answer is question is why? This is and it starts from here. It ends here. So in your second paragraph, you have to say yes, and you have to give reasons. One, two, three reasons. Because number one, legal, number two, constructive obligation to transfer the cash. Okay, this is from your uh, this is from your textbook. After this point, you are relating it to this case study. What it says, entity must pay additional assets into the scheme. You have to pay or not? You have to pay. If you don't pay additional assets into your scheme, how are you going to pay your employees pension? From that scheme, no, it should have assets. So you have to pay. You have an obligation. So that's it. Third paragraph. Okay. What should you include in a third paragraph? It's following a logical order. If you see, you started with conceptual framework, the definition, sorry, the recognition criteria. Then you went to the liability. Second, you then talked whether defined benefit deficit means the definition of liability or not yes it means and the reasons third what should you include how we, are you going to start your third paragraph see you have to write this answer in your own words okay i'm just telling you the logical order it's following See, basically this third point according to me you can ignore this point no need to write it because it's it talks about uh, plan asset reducing your plan obligation okay so here you don't have to talk about it it's not so important okay so immediately we'll jump to the fourth okay now you have to talk about what faithful whether it is relevant whether it gives relevant information or, or and faithful representation relevant information and faithful representation this is the fourth paragraph that talks about that so recognizing this defined benefit scheme provides a relevant information how just saying it gives relevant information it's not enough how so the question is how this is what you are answering okay and it starts from here okay because if you put it in a statement of financial position, users will understand what is your present value of the unfunded but promised pension obligation. Okay. This deficit will need to be funded. You have to fund it. If you don't write it in your financial statement, how will you know how much you have to fund? You don't know. So you cannot make your cash contributions. You don't know how much cash contributions you have to make. To pay from the fund if you have it in your financial statement by recognizing it now you are most likely to increase your cash contribution okay you are going to fund how by increasing your cash contribution you will already know how much of cash contribution you have to invest if you if it is recognized that's why it gives relevant information okay also you can include this further stuff 
this might be lengthy for you you might not think about it is fine if you stop till here it's enough but these are additional things okay like if you give contributions and all it will reduce your cash uh, for your investment and dividend payment and this might be considered as risky for shareholders because they might not want to invest in that company where there's a large defined benefit deficit right they do not see it positively because you have to keep funding next this is the last okay plan obligation is complex in nature by the way we all know that okay so if you have to measure this it involves making number of assumptions is it or not like your employee's life expectancy what will be your final salary you have to make your expectations assumptions and then you have to calculate okay assumption means lot of subjectivity is there so you are more liable to error and bias you can make more errors there okay but is19 also says it recommends the use of qualified person to do this okay so if you are using a qualified actuary means whatever you are presenting is faithfully represented it's a faithful representation is is it yes so also is19 is not leaving you alone like that even if it's complex it says you have to give extensive disclosure because your users have to understand what is your estimation techniques and the sensitivity of the deficit to wider economic change how sensitive the deficit is if if something changes by a small amount let's say the interest rate changes by a small amount what would be the impact on the deficit so if you take all this into consideration you see it it gives a faithful representation and also it gives relevant information so at the end yes is19 is consistent with conceptual framework that's your final answer now we'll be moving on to test understanding 7 amendment <clears throat> curtailment and settlement the problem with this is if there is a plan amendment settlement or curtailment it is termed as pasc okay the short form then the effect of this is calculated by comparing the net defined benefit deficit before and after the event okay that means before the amendment and after the amendment or before the settlement after the settlement before the curtailment after the curtailment right it could be anything it could be amendment it could be curtailment or it could be settlement if there is any of this three in a plan you need to show the impact before and after right that's the problem okay why because earlier okay in is19 even if there was a plan amendment settlement or curtailment you did not have to uh, it was not relevant i mean the net defined benefit deficit that you calculate using assumptions okay even if your assumption changes because of an amendment curtailment or settlement you don't have to worry about it because whatever the net interest and the current service cost that you have calculated based on your previous assumptions will remain the same even after plan amendment settlement or curtailment that means previously okay you don't have to use your updated assumptions whatever the current service cost and net interest specifically this two you have calculated in the beginning will be the same throughout it will remain the same even after pasc that was easier right before but now the board says no by ignoring the updated assumption they say it's it, it's not giving a faithful representation so therefore now they have amended it what did they amend amendments means they have made some changes now is 19 19 says no you have to you have to take those updated assumptions when calculating the current service cost and the net interest so for the current service cost okay 
you have to remeasure it using the updated assumptions. That means you have to again calculate your net defined benefit liability based on new assumptions for the current to calculate the current service cost. If there is an amendment, settlement, or curtailment, let's say in a in a during the period in a year, first nine month nothing happened. After the nine month, your uh, there are some new assumptions. There, there are, uh, the plan amended or there was a plan curtailment or a plan settlement. Then for those remaining three months, you have to again calculate, remeasure your defined net defined benefit liability. You cannot use your same net defined benefit liability that you calculated in the first nine months. You have to again remeasure it. And on that, right, you have to calculate the net interest. Net interest also is the same like the current service cost. So both your net interest and current service cost will change based on your updated assumption. In short, now test your understanding seven is wholly dedicated to this only amendment, curtailment, and settlement. Before we move on to asset ceiling, understanding test your understanding seven. Okay, this is the last question before we go on to the amendments and curtailment and asset ceiling so in this question this person has done some incorrect accounting treatment and you are supposed to correct it now okay so starting with the first para okay it has a year end 31st may 2003 you have to be very careful with the time here because this this is time apportioned okay for the first nine month they have some assumption and after the nine months the assumption changed so you have to deal with first nine months separately and the remaining three months separately in this question okay so it has a defined benefit pension plan which is plan a okay the net deficit at first of june 2002 was 125 million with the interest four percent net interest component is 5 billion how because they have taken 4% on this 125 they have showed you and this been this has been charged to pnl the current service for the year was calculated using assumptions as at 1st of june 2002 that means one whole year they have used the same assumptions only and it is expensed to pnl as a part of the service cost component Moving on to the next, on 1st of March, this is the very important date because from here, your assumption changed. Members of Plan A were offered a settlement. A loss on settlement was 3 million. Okay. This also they have taken, at a, uh, taken as service cost. This was determined by measuring the deficit on 1st of March 2003, both before and after the settlement using the updated assumptions. Here, the interest rate is 3% on 1st of March 2003. Then comes the remeasurement loss. This was calculated. Okay. It was there also in other comprehensive income over the average remaining working life. But you see, this is reclassified to PL in the future. You can figure out that something is incorrect here, right? Most of the things are incorrect. You have to correct now. This is another type way question in SBR can come not only for IS 19 for any standard they will give you incorrect accounting treatment and you have to correct to correct the accounting treatment you have to know the rules and regulations of each standard very thoroughly otherwise you cannot calculate correct them so how do you correct them by saying uh, this is wrong this is wrong this is wrong no you don't write like that you first mention what is wrong with them then you give them your correct accounting treatment okay so you can start in any order you can write this answer but it's better if you're writing it in any order be sure you have included each and everything sometimes because of the time pressure you might lose some of the things for example under service cost you are writing current service you didn't mention about past service you forgot or you are mentioning about uh, remeasurement you are not writing about net interest so make sure you write net interest current service past service if there is any curtailment loss or gain on that remeasurement these are four to five important things that are there i think these are the only things okay you can count them on your fingers only four to five things okay so now you can write them in different paragraphs also 
each thing each one each element will be written in different paragraphs with space in between okay starting with past service cost i'm not writing the full answer i'm just giving you the the, the points that you have to write in your answer okay so calculation of the past service cost or gain or loss on settlement okay if you have to calculate a past service cost okay okay past service cost or gain or loss on settlement because this also forms a part of your service cost right or curtailment okay any of this you have to requires the recalculation okay you have to recalculate you cannot uh, you cannot put them based on your assumption which was for the one whole year because after nine months your assumption changed so you have to now recalculate based on your new assumptions for this things past service cost gain or loss on settlement and government requires recalculation of defined benefit deficit using the latest assumptions okay so this updated assumption should be used when calculating net interest you have to use the updated assumptions when using net interest component and current service cost for the remainder of the reporting period first nine month okay how nine months see it starts from 1st of june 2002 right and they told from this assumption only they didn't change the assumption they put this only current service cost they have used using this assumption only but it changed assumption when 1st of march 2003 why they offered a settlement and all those things it means assumptions changed because they told on 1st of march 2003 both before and after the settlement using updated assumption so it means from this date your assumption changed so 1st of june 2002 to 1st of march 2003 was one assumption your old assumption calculate how many months from june to march june july august september october november december january february march is the first so you don't calculate march nine months first nine months old assumption then come 1st of march to 1st of june because it has a year in 31st may 2003 march april may three months or you can say 31st march so 31st may sorry so if you calculate this is three months and this three months your assumption changed so updated assumptions and they told that when you calculated your service cost it was based on your own assumptions the entire 12 months so you no know, first nine months nine months you don't have to worry but the remaining three months you have to recalculate your current service cost based on your updated assumptions that's what you have to do okay and same for the net interest so both your net interest and service cost current service cost next thing that you need to correct is settlement okay this settlement happened after nine months no so the net interest component see you have to calculate also some things you have to calculate while explaining small small uh, calculations are there because whenever see how will you know you have to calculate based on the number 
whenever you are given numbers in your question means you have to do some calculation examiner wants you to do some calculation otherwise they will never give you numbers this is the way to find out whether calculations are needed in explanations or not if there were no numbers don't worry you just have to write but since there are numbers you have to calculate okay recalculate so do the recalculation now okay that is because of the settlement the net interest net interest for the first nine months okay net interest for the first nine months should be based on One twenty five million and four percent interest on this assumption only. Okay, so if you calculate it like this, it will be four percent of one twenty five into nine divided by twelve will be equal to how much? How much? Three point seven five million. This will be your net interest. Okay, however, the net interest for the final three months. Should be based on the recalculated deficit. Again, you have to calculate the deficit. And interest on the date was recalculated as three percent. This is recalculated oh, wait, just. I think interest rate fell. Ah, okay, that is the interest rate. Okay, interest rate fell to three percent. Okay, so this three percent has to be applied to recalculated deficit. Already they have given the interest rate, right? So three percent on recalculated deficit. We don't know the recalculated deficit, but you have to write it. It's based on this for last. Three months. Okay. Done. Then, what's next? We have talked about past service settlement, net interest. Now, current current service cost. Next third paragraph. Current service cost. What to do with current service costs? This was calculated using assumptions at the start of the year. But when you are calculating the current service for the final three months, it should be determined using the assumptions used when remeasuring the deficit post settlement. Okay, this is also there in your answer. I am not writing the answer. Read the answer. You will understand now. Okay, for the final three months, this also will change. Next. The last is your remeasurement. This is the last remeasurement. Okay, it is very easy. IS nineteen says it will not be reclassified to PNL. Here they said it will be reclassified. So so it's wrong. It will be immediately. It will go to OCI or the comprehensive income. Okay. Because remeasurement component will never go to profit and loss. IS nineteen says no, it restricts it. Okay, so they have misclassified the loss. So that's it for this. Now we'll be moving on to our next topic. Asset ceiling. Asset ceiling. Is when your when you are having a surplus. See, most of the time you have defined benefit pension that are in deficit, right? Where your obligation is more than your plan assets. But there are some positions where your defined benefit plan shows a surplus. Surplus means when your plan assets are more than plan obligation. Okay, in that condition, okay, you have to measure 
okay a defined benefit plan that is in surplus is 19 says that this surplus must be measured at the lower of this two number one the amount that is calculated as normal and number two the total of the present value of any economic benefits available in the form of refund from the plan or reduction in future contributions to the plan right i know it's a little difficult to understand the second point the concept see when you are getting any form of refund from the plan okay or your future contributions into the plan reduces right because when it reduces means it's a surplus and when it increases when your obligation increases when you have to pay when your obligation increases you have to pay uh, you have to increase your contributions into the plan isn't it but when it's a surplus your future contribution to the plan reduces please understand the thing when your loan increases you have to pay more or less more you have to contribute more right contribution increases but when the amount of the loan reduces okay your contribution also reduces you have to pay less now same way for this if you take the same concept and apply it here is the same when it's a surplus there'll be a reduction in the future contribution and when it's an obligation increase in future contribution so you have to see out of this to whichever is the lower you recognize your surplus at that you measure your surplus at that amount in the exam if a question is given you first have to understand this to the lower of this two and if the numbers are there you have to calculate what would be your surplus because when it comes to defined benefit uh, deficit right where obligation is more than plan asset we have seen lots of questions right we have done lots of questions till now on deficit but what about surplus we have not done any question on surplus because this situation is not very common but it can come it's not something which is not possible so if it comes know that this is the rule and this the lower of this two is known as asset ceiling that means you are putting a ceiling to the asset that means beyond this you cannot recognize asset see if you go through any standard in sbr okay all the ias and ifr standard when the recognition of asset comes they are very strict compared to recognition of liability the same is under is 12 also income tax there also is the same when you have to recognize deferred tax asset and deferred tax liability recognition of deferred tax asset is more strict than deferred tax liability why do you think is this why are they more strict on asset recognition of asset because because any company wants to inflate their asset in the financial statement to show that they are in a better position they do that that means they are misguiding they do not want to show the true picture and they want to reduce their liability but accounting concepts according to accounting concepts you have to apply the concept of prudence according to that concept you have to reduce your asset show lower of the asset and increase your liability that concept is known as prudence concept if you can if you have a you know you can recall your accounting concepts prudence is what you have to be very cautious of it when you're recognizing asset that's why they are putting a ceiling to that asset that beyond this level beyond the ceiling you cannot recognize asset that's why so that's why they are saying lower of this two you recognize the surplus it's known as asset ceiling okay so that means surplus can only be recognized to the extent that you can recover it in a form of refund or your future contribution should reduce right if it is not recoverable in any form of refund then you cannot recognize it only if you can recognize partially you can recover in the form of refund or fully you can recognize it only up to that extent okay now we'll be doing a question on asset saving before we move on to our last topic for this lecture which is other issues illustration for the asset ceiling okay so here you have been given the fair value of plan asset present value of liability and present value of future refund 950 870 what is the value of the asset that should be recognized in the financial statement 
just now we went through the theory behind this okay so here first find the net position that is 950 minus uh, sorry it's 800 minus 950 which will be okay 800 950 so the net position is it's a surplus isn't it 150 because it's a negative figure now reduction is what this is the normal amount right they told lower of the normal amount that means plan asset the surplus and present value of future refund which is 70 don't check negative okay so this is positive just look at the figure 70 is less than 150 lower of this two so you have to recognize your asset at 70 okay now let us do test your understanding 8 Okay. Here you have been given fair value of land asset, present value of obligation. Both the opening and the closing balance are given. Okay, as you can see here, one, two, and three, four. Okay, then the current service cost, benefits paid, contribution paid, discount rate is given as ten percent. Now, asset ceiling. Okay, at thirtieth June two thousand three and thirtieth June two thousand four has been identified. Using the present value of the future refund which and reduction, which is 200. For both the years, it is 200 million, both 30th June 2003 and 2004. Explain with the supporting calculation the accounting treatment of the pension scheme for the year ended 30th June 2004. Okay. Now, as I told you, whenever you are given question like this, okay, do the net plan before the ceiling and after the ceiling okay so this is how you do this question this question you have to do it in excel okay the calculation part but the explanation part you can uh, do it in word okay let us do So here, first net plan, it's a net plan asset, no? Net plan asset before ceiling. Whenever you're given a ceiling, this is how you have to do it. In Excel, you can do it in three separate columns. Okay. Then comes your ceiling adjustment. Then comes your net asset. After ceiling. Okay. And notes. See, these notes are for workings. Why? Because you have to explain or explanation. These are your explanation. Okay. Now, here it will be my uh, narratives. So, first is the Everything is in dollar million, by the way. I am dropping the millions. Now, balance brought forward. Opening balance. What is it? It will be negative this time. It is. You already deduct your obligation uh, from your obligation. From your obligation, you deduct asset. It's not the other way around. I always tell obligation minus asset, obligation minus asset. So 2000 minus 2600. It is minus 600. Okay. And. Okay, wait. 600. Now ceiling adjustment. Okay. What is your ceiling adjustment? They have already told is 200. Okay, that means after ceiling, it can be the max is 200. Beyond this, you cannot write. Maximum ceiling amount should be 200 million. Above this, you cannot write. So, you know this. It's 200. Right? So, find the difference. The difference is what? 400. Okay? It's 400. If you don't know the maths, okay, it is minus uh, 2000 minus minus 600 
So minus minus is, is see if you do it in a calculator, it's like this minus minus 600. Okay, so this minus minus becomes minus into minus becomes plus. I didn't know that I have to teach you maths also now. Okay, uh, anyway, so minus 200 plus 600 is 400. This is how you get a positive 400. Be very careful with the sign, okay? It reduced by 400. Earlier it was 600. Now it increased up to 200. It increased means, see, in numbers, it might be less, but it's a negative. Negative 200 is greater than negative 600, right? Understanding? And this is an asset, okay? So for here, we'll put it as note one, explanation. Next is net interest, immediately net interest. What, what, at what percentage? 10% I suppose. Wait, 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 wait. Yes, it's 10%. So net 10% on this amount, okay? 60, here also it's 10, sorry. It's 40 and it's 20. Okay, here also there is a note next to it. Let me explain. You have to explain. They told explain with supporting calculation. Okay, this is supporting calculation. This has to be there also explanation. If you just put calculation without explanation, you will lose a lot of marks. Service cost. Okay. When it comes to service cost, okay, it is 100. Remember, asset ceiling is only for asset, the broad forward balance and interest. Why? Because that net interest is calculated around broad forward balance. But when you're taking service cost, nothing changes. It's 100, it will remain 100 only. So there is no impact of ceiling on service cost. Okay. Note 3. Then comes your benefits. Benefits, no impact. No impact, no impact. Point four. Still, you have to make a point. Then comes your contribution. Contribution also, ceiling will not have an impact on contributions. How much is the contribution? It is 90. So, deduct the 90. No impact, deduct 90. Okay, this will have note 5. Now, the subtotal. Okay, I have to extend this line. Subtotal, just add up in Excel is very fast, just you need to perform the sum function. Equal to, okay, in your Excel, if you do this, it will be like this equals sum. Open the bracket, drag the cell um, vertically from this to this, okay, and then enter and you will get the answer, right? And Excel is very easy. So here it will be 650, 440. Make sure that you get this figure, okay? Do it on your own today and check. Then comes the remeasurement. Remeasurement, we still don't know, but we'll put it as node number six. And then balance carried forward, the closing balance is already given here. 2400 minus 3100 is 700. But here again, for, even for the closing balance, the limit is 200 like how we did for the opening balance. So the difference is 500. Okay. Now, calculation part is over. Okay. We need to explain. Okay. I'm not putting the explanation. I'm not writing it out. Answers are there. Please read it out. But I will explain you the points. Point number one, opening balance. Okay. So when you're taking the opening balance, yes, you have to reduce it, okay? Next, 
because opening balance okay it will reduce by the asset ceiling okay because they have already given you the amount see here they didn't tell the lower of these two things okay they already gave you 200 they told that asset ceiling was there on 30th june 2003 as well as 30th june 2004 both based upon the present value of future refund from the plan or reduction in future they have already given it as 200 for both the dates that's why number two point number two what was point number two net interest okay so interest charge on the obligation or earned on the plan asset is based upon the discount rate that is 10 percent the discount rate might be for obligation but you can still use for the asset return on assets okay the 10 percent okay and this will go to pnl okay the net interest part then comes the service cost current year service cost usually what happens it increases the plan obligation but when it comes for net plan asset okay it reduces it reduces the net plan asset the service cost okay and this is also taken to pnl this also taken to pnl what else contribute benefits benefits have no impact it reduces both the plan obligation as well as the plan assets by the same amount contribution it increases the fair value of the plan asset and also the net plan asset during the year and the sixth one is the remeasurement component okay what about the remeasurement component it is recorded in other components of income and it is not reclassified in pnl next statement of financial position what will go in the statement of financial position after writing explaining the notes okay statement of financial position you have to write net pension asset 200 okay when it comes to profit and loss service cost 100 will go net interest 20 will go you see this 100 and this 20 will go to pnl so from your service you deduct net interest 100 minus 20 becomes 80 so in your pnl 80 will go and other comprehensive income is the remeasurement if you check the remeasurement here okay this is 50 i have not done it sorry i forgot 60 and 10 so 10 is the remeasurement component which will go to other comprehensive income and if you add the 10 with your profit which is 80 the total is 90 total comprehensive income is 90 so that's it now we'll be moving on to other issues and that will be finishing with one question that will be the last question for this lecture other issues so in the other issues this is the last section of this lecture here we are going to study other issues other than the pension so we are over with the pension okay now along with pension pension is a type of post employment benefit right other than then we have other long-term benefits other short-term employee benefits so now we are going to go through them and how to deal with them short-term employee benefit okay this is easy because this are like which you pay your employees for the short term service and this short term benefits are usually when that employee employee is in the business like in the company okay he is being employee okay like you are paying them monthly salary or wages or any bonus or any other kind of benefits they are known as short term employee benefit okay if you with this okay they are normally taken as taken as expense in pnl whatever your wages or salary cost they are taken as expense in your pnl okay but if 
some standard allows you to capitalize your benefits in kind or bonus or salaries okay like some reporting standard if it allows you to capitalize then you have to capitalize but other than that it is taken as expense regarding bonuses and other short-term payments okay they are recognized using a normal criteria of establishing an obligation if you have an obligation to pay bonus then it's an expense okay for example every year you are paying bonus <coughs> or other short-term payments then it's an expense okay if you can reliably measure it okay and you have an obligation then you have to recognize bonuses and other short-term payments otherwise you do not normally recognize them if you cannot measure it reliably next benefits in kind this is another term of short-term employee benefit like for example you are giving them medical expenses uh company the holiday company car these are benefits in kind which are not which are not in cash okay but the way you recognize this cost is the same as the way you recognize cost uh, so cash expense if you pay anything in cash it's an expense right same way for benefits in kind is also you recognize it in the same way how you recognize wages and salaries there is no difference okay for example if it costs the employer six thousand pounds to give the company car let's say for example okay uh, sixty thousand to the employer to give the car to an employee that sixty thousand is the cost for the employer right so that sixty thousand has to be recognized what is the cost to the employer on in providing that uh, benefit that is your cost short-term employee benefits there are two okay uh, another third uh, another uh, short-term employee benefit is compensated absence that means for example if you are giving them sick leave or anything like that but the thing is there are two types one is accumulating one is non accumulating accumulating means accumulating benefit means you can carry them forward in the future if you are not utilizing it fully this year you can carry it forward this is earned over time okay and this is recognized this expense is recognized over the period the services are provided by the employee for example the employee is there in the company for five years and is providing the service so it will be divided by five each year you will be recognizing this expense but this will typically result in the recognition of a liability at the reporting date it will be recognized as a liability okay liability at the reporting date for the expected cost of the accumulated benefit that is earned but not yet claimed by an employee employed in claim it yet but they have earned it right you have to recognize it at that day as liability in a statement of financial position one example is holiday pay okay for example this year you have an unused holiday entitlement you can carry forward this next year and claim it in the future period so today you will recognize it as a liability in your reporting in your statement of financial position if it is carried forward because employee is entitled to it next year even though they haven't claimed it that year but today it's a liability the other type is non accumulating benefit please understand the difference accumulating means you can it keeps accumulating you can carry it forward non accumulating means the difference is you cannot carry it forward you have to utilize it this year otherwise it's waste for example an employee continues to receive their normal remuneration while being absent due to illness or other permitted re uh, reason okay a change to profit and loss would only be made when the authorized absence occurs for example if you have been absent for one day there will be change in profit and loss but if there is no such absence there will be no change uh, no charge to profit or loss if there is no absence nothing to worry if there is an absence there will be charge to profit and loss according to the days you have been absent and you cannot carry it forward normally this area does not come in exam it has mostly pension okay the benefit okay define 
benefit plan which comes but if this comes in exam you never know you have to know the rules okay now we are moving on to termination benefits okay what is termination benefit termination benefit means benefits that are given while you have been terminated when you have been terminated there are some benefits that is given to you to the employee how do you recognize it the reporting period sorry the reporting entity recognize it as a liability and an expense in relation to the termination benefits at the earlier of these two days when entity can no longer withdraw the termination benefits offer or entity recognizes the restructuring cost according with I, in accordance with IS 37 earlier of this two you have to recognize the termination benefit sorry the expense okay and remember entity cannot withdraw a termination benefit offer when a detailed plan has already been communicated to the affected employees you cannot withdraw after the afterwards once you have communicated the detailed plan it is no longer withdrawn now measurement this was recognition now we are moving on to measurement once it is recognized how do you measure it depends on the nature of the benefit okay if there are any subsequent changes okay you should account for it there are three conditions number one if the benefit is recognized sorry if the benefit is wholly settled within the, within the 12 months it will be recognized as a short-term benefit if the benefit is not wholly settled within the 12 months then it comes under other long-term benefit because more than 12 months and if the benefit results in an enhancement to an employee's pension scheme okay then the rules for pension scheme accounting are applied pension scheme means all the rules that we have done in defined benefit plan will come here then it will be a curtailment or an amendment right so let me repeat if the benefit is settled less than 12 months within 12 months short term benefit not in 12 months long term benefit and if it results in enhancement then pension scheme accounting okay now we are moving on to other long term employee benefits here this is accounted in a very similar way to what we are just we what we just went through the post employment benefit that is your pension defined benefit pension right why because other long term means long term means you are paying this benefit over 12 months that's why it's other long term benefits even your pension is more than 12 months so both are long term so you account for them in a similar way however however the old difference is the remeasurement component here the remeasurement component goes to pnl not in other comprehensive income but in your pension it goes in other comprehensive income and not in pnl okay that is the old difference for other long-term employee benefits now we are over with all those now disclosure requirements see is 19 are very strict when it comes to disclosure they need extensive disclosure why because is 19 is a complex area to deal with it is for the beneficial of the user number one it is very subjective you need experts to evaluate okay so in your disclosure you have to disclose what are the assumptions that has been used to determine the net defined benefit obligation or asset number two what is the general description of the type of the plan okay very important three reconciliation of assets and liabilities that is recognized in the statement of financial position you just cannot show the net position you have to show obligation and the fair value of asset and then the net balance in the in your disclosure right they charge to total comprehensive income and you need to separate it into the appropriate components what goes to pnl what goes to other comprehensive income analysis of the remeasurement component to identify return on plan assets what are the actual gain and losses and sensitivity sensitivity analysis and narrative description of how the defined benefit plan may affect the nature timing and uncertainty of the entity's future cash flow see understand this 
this is something defined benefit plan is something you are going to pay it in a long term right but it is going to affect your future cash flow isn't it because you have to pay from the cash only ultimately your cash only will reduce so you are very uncertain you don't know the timing so because of this you have to do a sensitivity analysis what is sensitivity analysis my afm students will know this but for those who does not know what is sensitivity analysis let me tell you sensitivity analysis means how sensitive okay how sensitive the the future cash flow will react to change in one variable see to calculate defined benefit plan there are so many variables okay we have net interest we have service cost we have contribution so many things are there if even if one thing changes one variable changes there by a small amount what would be the impact the outcome on the total will we have enough fund in that plan to pay to employees or should we pay additional contribution into the scheme how sensitive higher the high, uh, the more sensitive it is okay the more sensitive it is it's not good the more insensitive it is is better that means even if you change uh, amount by higher for example let's say you are changing the interest rate by a bigger amount it will not have much impact on the plan then it's a good thing but if it if even a 1% change or a 0.5% change in the interest rate make the plan from deficit to surplus from surplus to deficit then it's not a good thing so your sensitivity analysis measures that it tells you that you don't have to calculate any sensitivity analysis or anything in sbr you just have to know for writing you can write it okay and also you can discuss narrative you can give narrations and all when you are disclosing it then we have criticism okay what are some criticism see is 19 has some criticism okay due to the lacking in the standard number 1 is classification some types of plan you cannot easily say whether it is defined contribution or defined benefit it's not easy it's not clear cut second volatility fair value of defined benefit plan asset is very difficult to measure reliably very difficult short term see is 19 requires defined benefit plans to be measured at fair value right but pension scheme assets are long term right both assets and liabilities are held for the long term then we have complexity complexity means is very complex to treat the defined benefit pension cost in the statement of profit or loss or other comprehensive income because even if you because users will not understand it easily why some things are in profit and loss some things are in the other comprehensive income it's not easy by the user to understand that's why it's very complex then the last is the conceptual framework okay what does conceptual framework says the requirement okay to reflect the future salary increases see your salary that you have predicted based on which you are predicting your pension will not remain the same right salary will increase or it might go down but mostly it increases so the requirement to reflect the future salary increases and unvested benefits when measuring the defined benefit obligation seems to be at odd with the conceptual framework's definition of liability why because there is no current obligation to pay this do you have a current obligation to pay the future salary increases today because of the past event no so to reflect those future salary increases in the when you are measuring defined benefit obligation is against conceptual framework's definition of liability it's not matching so that's it for this lecture we are over with this lecture now we are going to do one question test understanding 9 to summarize everything whatever we have discussed in now and i'm going to summarize you the lecture test your understanding 9 okay here you are supposed to discuss the accounting treatment of the above plan so here this is about a factory okay which is going to be closed down in 6 months that means you are going to terminate employees in 6 month 
right now they told that each employee who continues to work until the closure of the factory will receive a cash payment of 24000 and employees leaving before the closure will receive 8000 there are 100 employees in the factory okay this is in 6 months they will close the factory okay at the time of announcing the plan the entity expects 15 of them to leave before the closure okay so how are you going to treat this accounting treatment let me let let me repeat it again there are 100 employees 15 of them are expected to leave before the closure okay and employee who works until the closure of the factory that means during that six month will receive a cash payment of 24000 but employees leaving before the closure will receive 8000 are you understanding so how do you deal with this there are two things that you need to do one is the 24000 the other one is 8000 separately that's a hint okay so here let me write termination benefits okay see what is this what is this person's name birch hazel must pay this eight thousand to all the employees no matter what whether they stay till six months or they leave before six months they have to pay why why this is termination benefit okay they are anyway going to leave the time doesn't matter whether they will leave uh, before the six month or at that date after the six month but they are going to leave so anyway they are going to be terminated right so this termination benefit everyone will receive all the employees who are going to be terminated so this eight thousand irrespective of whether the employee stays till the closure date or not you have to pay because this is the termination benefit you understand so they must pay eight thousand per employee okay and this is the termination benefit so hazel has to recognize a liability of how many employees are there 100 all these 100 employees will receive this 8000 so 100 into 8000 is 800000 right this 800000 will be recognized as a liability for the termination benefit right at the earlier of recognize liability of this one at the earlier of remember termination benefit you have to recognize at the earlier of the two dates just now we went through the slides at the earlier of which two date at the earlier of when the plan is announced they didn't tell the dates but you can just write it and when it recognizes the restructuring cost okay the restructuring cost with the closure of the factory next what about the 24000 see this 24000 if you see this is on some condition what is that condition if employee stays before the closure they are going to receive this 24000 sorry i'm sorry if they stay till the closure that means they have to work for six months and the day they are leaving they are going to receive this cash payment of 24000 this is based on some condition so this is not a termination benefit okay this is known as benefit in exchange for employee service or for service this is the second point okay here employees are going to receive an additional amount if they work for the full six month what is that amount 
See from 24,000, 8,000 will go, right? Deduct 8,000 because already you are recognizing that 8,000 has termination benefit. So from 24,000, if you take away 8,000, you are left with 16,000, right? The 16,000 you have to pay. If they work for six full six months, this is an addition. Okay. So you see that what is that event that is uh, creating this obligation to pay the 16,000? It is based on the employee service. It is not a termination benefit. Right. So therefore, and it is for six months, six months. So it is within 12 months, less than 12 months. So it's a short term employee benefit. Okay. So you have to account this for account this as short term employee benefits employee because it is within six months it is within 12 months short term employee benefit okay this is an additional salary cost now that's not enough what about the expense you have to recognize an expense in the pnl how much how much will be the how much will be the expense this is a short term don't forget short term for short term employee benefit there is an expense which goes to pnl you are paying 16000 okay this 16000 okay out of 16000 not all employees will receive the 16000 only those employees who stay till 6 months so from 100 15 will leave okay that means only 85 employees will receive it so you multiply this by 85 employees okay you need to divide this by 6 months because it is only for six months okay which will which, which will uh, equal to two two six 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 seven so you recognize this as an expense in your pnl okay you recognize this each month because you want to find for each month each six month that's why so this each month you will recognize this as an expense okay with a corresponding increase in the carrying amount of the liability your liability amount also will increase okay because of this expense because you are liable to pay that in the six months the day you pay after the six months okay the day you pay that then your liability cancels off you close your liability account but till then there will be a liability account also for those six months okay so that's it for this now we'll summarize this whole lecture is 19. so now let's summarize the post employment benefit plan okay this is the key area of this topic so we started with defined contribution plan okay defined contribution plan is something which is easy because it follows the normal accrual accounting okay but the difficult part is in defined benefit plan okay here you need to know the three areas where the element of defined benefit plans will go for example in your statement of financial position there are three things that you need to recall plan obligation at present value plan assets at fair value asset ceiling okay then comes your profit or loss your service cost component will go there in your service cost there are two elements three elements that goes current service cost past service cost and gain or loss on your settlement okay then comes your even your net interest goes there okay then comes your oci other comprehensive income in your other comprehensive income only the remeasurement component goes and you cannot reclassify it to profit and loss it will always stay in oci okay and for remeasurement component we have to do a working there's a pro forma which i have given in the beginning of this lecture starting with your opening balance you deduct your obligation from your asset always then you add your interest then comes your service cost past and current and if there is any curtailment or anything deduct your contribution benefits have no impact closing balance will be given to you the balance 
the remaining the balancing figure is your remeasure, remeasurement component it could be a gain or it could be a loss accordingly you will adjust next <clears throat> After defined benefit, we went through other long-term employee benefit. Other long-term employee benefit is very similar to your pension, defined pension benefit. Why? Because it is more than 12 months. Long-term is more than 12 months. That means you spread the cost over your service period. If the service is for five years, you spread the cost over five years. Divide the cost by five. Short-term employee benefit, normal accrual accounting, it is based on the cost that is to you okay within 12 months cumulating or non cumulating right there were two things cumulating means you can carry forward it non cumulating means you cannot carry forward it okay then termination benefit termination benefit means you recognize this okay when an obligation recognize when an obligation or when a related restructuring cost is recognized whichever of this is earlier you recognize the termination benefit. So in your exam, that's it for this lecture. I'm over with this. Before I end, I want to tell you one thing. In your exam, if you get, you can get the question from anywhere. It could be a termination benefit. It could be a short-term employee benefit. It could be other long-term employee benefit or pension. These are the four areas in IS-19 that could be tested. But mostly it is pension benefit, the first one. But if the other, other areas comes, they are small, okay? So also try to learn them as well because you never know what you might get in the exam. Okay. So uh, study the small areas. You need to do questions on them with numbers as well. And each of them are different. Do not get confused. Because pension is different. The way you calculate short term employee benefit is different. The way you calculate termination benefit is different. So you have to know these differences. So IS-19 is all about that. My job is over. Now your job is to go to revision kit, do questions, all the questions on IS-19 today. Once you're over with this lecture. Okay. So thank you for watching and see you in the next standard that is IS-20. IS-20 is government grants and all. It's a very small standard. I think I will finish it in 10 minutes. So see you in the next lecture and thank you for watching.